It's about that time. Visualizing, paddling out and making it real. Dedication on a level only you can feel. Motivation. It gets stronger every year. Realization. Action cures fear. The Surfcast, yeah. I just want to welcome everybody to the Surfcast. Here we are on a special episode with our guest, Brad Gerlach. He's got a lot of exciting news to share with us. And when it comes to the Surfcast and everything that I produce, it's all about inspiration, about inspiring you guys to bring it up to the next level. And no one better uh, to do this than my good friend, Brad Gerlach. So welcome to the show, Brad. Thanks, TR. I am... uh... I'm excited to uh, to tell you you're the first. This is the first podcast um, I've done. Uh, you asked me to be on the podcast, uh, I don't know, a year ago or something, and I just said I, I couldn't come on until I finished this this project because I I've been working on this for <laughs> over ten years, and I just so sick of talking about what I'm gonna do, uh, and I uh, just want to be able to talk about what it is and 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 what I've done and um yeah and uh you know for me you and I go back 30 plus years talking about with Gallagher at my house talking with my dad going through videos talking about technique talking about superior movement um you know who's doing what who's coming up who's who's on the way out just i mean just everything surf or just like blah, 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 yeah so excited and um that is all in what i've what i my case just i've just put it all into wave key which is my um which is the way that i train my students and also train myself to keep myself sharp and um, if I want to like, if I want to watch somebody, somebody do something cool, I'll look at it, I'll study it, and I'll do it here on the floor to get my body to, to like, I can understand things intellectually, mm-hmm. but my nervous system needs to understand it. Um, it needs to, it needs, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not language, it's, a, it's in words, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, a deeper kind of uh, instinct, but there's a connection from your brain into your body. And there, when you, when you think, when you're thinking of, uh, you don't, you, you're, you miss the timing. So while you might have good technique uh, and you see this in all different types of sports and music and art, you'll see, um, you know, a musician with, you know, who's got great talent, but they'll miss the timing on something. Now, if you're at a concert and, and you're, you're listening, you might not even hear it, but if there's a musician in the crowd, he'll go, Ooh, those guys, those guys made a mistake, but they're so good, which is, this is like digging rail in a way. They're so good. They made the mistake and they were able, they didn't get, they didn't get like stiff. And go like, hey, you fucked up, drummer, or you, you know, they don't do that. They go, they go, woo, coo, and that's what uh, top level surfers do when they dig rail, make a mistake, they can fix it. And the best guy in the world for that is Kelly Slater. Like, there's nobody better at recovery than than I've ever seen than Kelly. <laughs> because at the- he, you know what he's like he's like an elephant memory guy he's like oh you know oh, you know i'm like oh, i'm like you are you went up that wave in tahiti where you like made that mistake and turned it into a 10 point ride do you know which wave i'm talking about absolutely you know, the one where he falls down and he lays back and actually makes a mistake. most people just be like going over the falls and he like pulls himself it stops his, it stops him it slows him down more than he wanted to but then he was so deft and so aware of his body and his instinct and all the stuff. He was able to like make that one, two, ten and won the contest. It's insane. It's that one he sort of did the layback on because he right. actually what he did what he did is he like he started to fall backwards and he and you know that you know when you hit water from a distance off of it if you do it if you do it light enough. Right. So, hit the water but he didn't hit the water like hard and go and then get sucked over he went bang bang 
he like bounced off of it and then and he, he didn't just bounce off out of control he bounced into control yeah he got and, like, speed out of just, it just like and pardon me he got speed out of it well he yeah and he you and what's is the way folded over and we didn't actually get to see but we got to see stuff from the side. It, it's been a long time since then, but that to me is like the most, you know, amazing recovery uh, deal. One of the other ones is like when Tom Kern was at J Bay and he did that layback thing that his board skipped and his whole body's just, just laying on the face of the wave and then he pulls it up underneath him. You know, that's, that's 90s, you know, but still, you know, and there's just like, there's, there's, that, that's not stuff that you can, technically like oh i i do this and i do that and then i do this and i do that it's instinct you know and and, and it's, an, it's it's a sophisticated nervous system a serving sophisticated nervous system that allows the that surfer to be able to uh, to capitalize actually on the mistake um you know and oh, we you can we we can talk about like i'm sure there's just every surfer good surfer has like tons of stories that are like oh, i made this one mistake and it turned out to be the best thing i ever did because i i got way more barrel than i would have and i, mean, I had him out of jaws parson's famous way of jaws was a mistake and and that's why he got barreled and he's like oh my god i thought it was just toast but you know <laughs> you know it's just all, it's that it's developing your your sophisticated nervous system and that's what wave key does it it tunes you into that and also if you're uh technically surfing is kind of a, is a very like you're intuitive right your, your your brain is here your eyes are here um lots of people lots of good surfers put their including myself over time um put their face down to the water when they're doing a bottom turn and when the face comes down and the, and the eyes go real down close to the water, it gives you the feeling that you're really low. You don't realize your butt stays up in the air. And, phys, and from a physical leverage positioning, if your butt's in the air and your head's down close to the wave, that is not the most optimal uh, position of power. No. Control. So just like many things, uh, people who are very athletic and very talented can do things like that and still make it work. You know what I mean? But that's what brings in the whole mystery of what does it, how do I rip? How do I surf well? I'm excited to see people, to, to see people progress. And um, I have people progressing every time I, I work with them because uh, I can tell, usually I can tell what to say and what not to say and not give too much information and overload people. Cause I think that's where coaching is um, sort of, sort of failed in the past is it's too much information. And then when you go surfing, you got too much information in your head. You're like, he's, he said, or she said, do this and do that. Put my arm here and put it there. Hope I remember when the wave comes, Oh fuck, here comes the wave. Oh, yeah, put your arm here. And then you, oh, it goes, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? And so coaching is, that's why I think coaching's had a bit of a, that's why when we grew up, it's like, you can't teach someone to surf. You know, those guys, like, you just got to do it, man. You know, in a way, that's true. You just got to do it. But if you know how to put your weight on your toes without sticking your ass up in the air and, putting your, and having your head be way over here, or when you do a cutback, you lean back over here so that you dig rail every time. And you know that that's not and when you practice it, then your, your success rate goes up. And that's, that's the point of weight feet. Is to is to help you have more fun at, at one of the most wonderful things that we have as humans, you know, surfing, weight riding. Truly, absolutely. I feel like a lot of the groms that I work with, because um, I do a lot of shooting for different coaches, different training camps, whatnot, have something that I like to call barrel fever, where it's just all they can think about is the barrel. And they take off thinking barrel and the wave does not call for a barrel at all. And they take off and they kind of hug it. And then sometimes they see that it's not 
a hollow wave and then they readjust and then they start going into more of a turn mindset, but it's too late. They had mm -hmm. to have been dropping in with an open mind to have capitalized on that. There was one formula for the best thing to do on that wave, only one for the board that they're riding, the ideal formula. And a lot of waves, there's only, you've got to do that straight out of the gates, a real crisp takeoff, and then with an open mind, do exactly what the wave calls for. And you've already got that in your mind from visualizing it so many times, and now you see the opportunity. It's the best moment. Like if you watch Kelly Slater surf, and especially if you watch him in person, and then you see the waves that he goes for, the maneuvers he goes for, why and when, you very quickly can see that this guy's a savant when it comes to reading waves. Like, you'll almost never see Kelly Slater go for an air unless it's a perfect round. And then people are maybe doing airs on every wave and you don't see him go for one. And someone might be like, oh, what, he doesn't do airs anymore? And then the best ramp of the day for him comes up and he does the best air of the day out of anybody. And it's the only air that he did because the wave really called for it. it like, my point is that if you can keep an open mind and do what the wave calls for, I think that that's fulfilling kind of the mission in, in surfing well. What do you say to, to a youngster who needs to be dropping in with a more open mind and just reading the wave? I mean, that's, that's, I'm guilty of it too. I mean, I've done it so many times where I've tried to stall for a tube and it's not there. It's, it's just, it's a misread, you know, possibly. And it's just a, that was that a misread because I'm so horny to get tubed or, you know, did I actually think the wave was going to double up and I just, you know, I, I misread it, you know, um, those are two questions to ask, but no, I, I think that, I mean, I feel that, um technically if you take off and you look too far down the line and you stare at it this is my dad used to tell me he's like you're staring at it you're staring at it i'm like what do you mean he's like you're just staring at it too long i'm like he's like you don't have to look at it the whole time and i'm like yeah i do he's like no you don't and i'm like oh oh uh, oh and if you watch like tom kern for instance um I mean, I do it a lot in my surfing, but you know, um, but Tom Tom does it a lot, and so does, and I've taught Taro about it a lot. Is to not is to take your eye off of the wave um, down the line and look at the wave right in front of you. And when you look, you know, you know, a foot in front of the nose of the board for a little bit, or just in front a little bit, you you you, you it's it's important not just for, for to look good. It's function there there might be a there might be something on the wave that tells you hey this thing's going to suck out or it's this isn't it's not the shadow on it just doesn't look like it's going to be that hollow you know I, it's it, so looking right in front of you also is a bit of a meditative thing it keeps you from it keeps you from it keeps you from doing this and when you do this a little bit and you lead with your head, you're not going to be in the most powerful position too. But really what you want to do is be able to slow down enough to where you can feel the fullness of the power of the wave so that you can sort of like pick a spot uh, as you're going down the wave to turn from and go like, oh, right there, is, I'm just going to tie it. And, you know, like oftentimes when I do that, I can see that there's, there'll be a slight There'll be a slight shock wave coming off of a, if I'm surfing a place and it's got rocks or whatever, there's a slight shock wave coming off of this thing. And if I didn't see it, I might bottom turn. Okay, it's coming this way. I'm going, here's, I'm going down this way. Like this, it's coming like this. It's barely visible, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's like a, a mound, right? And it's kind of going this way as I'm dropping down the wave. If I see it, I can go and turn right there and go and just and get like a without having to go like you know like this i just and it just gives me like a ton of speed and power and projection i don't see it and it goes like this and then i try to do my bottom turn just after it 
Yeah, derail. So, you know, there's so much value in that alone. And that also keeps you dealing with what's right in front of you rather than too far down the line. Now, I'm not saying you don't know, never look too far down the line, but usually I do that before the big, like, I'm counting the wave and I look down the line and I can kind of see and then I go, okay, I, 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 it's not going to change too much if I look down here. I mean, I'm not going to look down here and never look there either. I could, you know, man of forest be with you style. I could, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of um, uh, ballsy, I suppose. You know, look down there and just be like, you know, I can see like Mason Ho doing stuff like that because he's just uh, like stoned and like stoked, you know, and so like connected, you know, you know, like one of my things, one of my favorite people to watch because of that. It looks so connected to the waves. That's why he can surf around all the rocks and all that stuff. He's yeah. got some, such a high level of control. But, you know, that's what I would say, you know, is don't see if you're looking too far down the line. You're projecting too far or you have too much of an agenda. And that's why I'm saying don't do wave key in the water. It's not for the water. It's only for the land. It's only for the land. And, and let your body just relax and, and, and let, it, let the wave inspire you to move, you know. That's, I think that's a great bit of advice right there for, for these fired up groms, you know, like don't look too far down the line right in front of you. I have another um, classic uh, memory, which is, man, back in those years in the 80s on tour, some of those stops, man, we had such flamboyant characters at, at that point in time mm -hmm. and, and put Gurr together with like Pagey and Box and like all all those guys you know and in, in the late night and all that and even into the day it just seemed like a constant freaking comedy show mm -hmm. like the, the laughter was such a huge part of surfing you know and and you guys were the elite you know level of of the world and the next generation that came along they kind of I think lost a bit of that. I've never really seen it regained on tour. And it was a very international thing too. You know, the Japanese guys were hilarious. I mean, like all that whole group of people our age, comedy was such a big part of surfing, you know? Um, well, I think that, I mean, my introduction to surfing, was all about comedy. It was like I'd go down to the beach and there'd be the guys at the beach that were funny, really funny. And we'd laugh a lot at the beach and do all kinds of antics and do all kinds of stuff. So it just, it kind of kept going. And I think that's the same, you know, when you look at those, if you ever watch a surf movie from the 50s or the 60s or whatever it is, there's a, they do a lot of skits, a lot of comedy skits in there and stuff. And you can tell those guys are laughing, laughing, laughing a ton. And, you know, in a way, I think that comes from the fact that we all in Unspoken felt quite special to be able to travel around the world together in a smaller group where we knew each other and we had personality conflicts and then brotherly and then fights and then brotherly makeups and then, you know, Potts and I like full brotherly fights and then makeup and then, you know, and then headlocks and then you know and late nights and then and then serve against each other try to spray each other and you know, you're not as good as me and you know what i mean and you're you know like just i mean pots and i just are, you know and we we thank each other like we see each other like, because we realize that that drive that fire like it, it it was like already a fire but then someone poured gasoline on it and, it, and you sort of found you know you found like more what you were made of it was, it was awesome man and i so appreciate that you know and at the time i was like what a dick i i hate that guy <laughs> but like uh but like you know that's me being immature i was just immature and not enough life experience you know hey babe babe i thought i heard i thought i heard bill z um but uh but I think that, you know, for, I mean, for me, like I grew up with John Guam, looking up to John Guam and he's just super funny. And every time we went to the contest, we were constantly, he was cracking us up and we were doing funny stuff. And so the whole thing about going surfing was fun because it was, as soon as we got together, it was, <laughs> it was just, it was comedy. It was, and, and then it was surfing and then it was comedy and then it was, okay, I'll see you later. For some more comedy and surfing tomorrow 
and the next day and the next day and this weekend we're going to the contest so that'll be comedy and I want to win it but I want to laugh and I'm gonna laugh too and it was just and then when I went out on tour I was like who's funny out here you know what I mean like who else is funny and if they're not funny I'm gonna figure out a way to imitate them and make them laugh and disarm them and like I mean Pagey was just one of the funniest he's one of the funniest funniest people Shmoo is super funny like Shmoo having a hilarious laugh so funny and um and then uh yeah it was just like it was just good i'm sure that what even though you, you say that the, the guys after us didn't i'm sure they had their whole they had their whole cracking up thing oh of on, course they kind of didn't want i think i think they wanted to separate themselves from us they wanted to you know kelly had this like professionalism thing going on and and then they all thought oh we're better following those that's what that's how that's how our generation will be different but then they ended up you know the momentum stuff ended up they doing tons of comedy stuff with loose change and you know and trying and, and uh well i thought there's some pretty funny stuff in loose change at least trying though trying you know a, you know the tough part about comedy is is that it's either funny or it's it's like burn you know but I always appreciate someone trying at least. That means that means they're at least they're they're at least uh, take not taking themselves seriously. And I think that's really important for surfing is that surfing doesn't take itself so seriously. Yet there's lots of serious because there's lots of serious situations. I mean that I looked on the line today and there was that Connor McGuire guy on that left in Ireland. I was like, oh my god, what a nugget! And like, oh my god, I'm like wowzer that wave's big you know and um, one of the biggest ever and for its steepness oh, it's that kind thing of is so gnarly, but you know and there, there's lots of serious and you know some of that, that that red bull peter contest at hours like two years ago that thing was crazy and some of those guys at shipsters and the right in west dawes and nazare i mean that looks just like oh my god uh you know that's serious so when you're outside the water you don't need to be serious <laughs> unless unless you're, unless you're training you know unless you're training and you're doing something that you know you're you're meditating or you're doing something you know, you know that's that's important to be to be focused but you know um but uh aside from that uh, like the comedy thing is what unites us all you know, are you, it's, it's, it's a really critically important part of surfing. It's always been there. So I agree. And your crew, I mean, your early crew, man, some of the funniest dudes ever. Like, why don't you give us a, uh, like a um, classic Todd Martin story that you can remember? Oh, my God. Todd <laughs> Martin. Yeah, he turned out to be, he was a really funny guy and turned out to be like a dangerous citizen. Like it was one of those things where I was like, whoa, you know, uh, whoa, that's like, he just never, like there were things that we laughed at as kids. And then it was like, after a certain while, I was like, whoa, that's like, that's not funny anymore. Uh, yeah. But, you know, Todd, Todd, Todd was like, literally, I look, he looked like uh, Jeff Spicoli <laughs> and uh, and he and when he came to school because i was at high school he was in 11th grade i was like a freshman he was spicoli I'm, and that was before he, that was before fast times at ridgemont high came out so when fast times at ridgemont high came out i just was like oh my god they cast martin <laughs> you know what i mean like they cast martin and and i'm like that's you know the thing about todd was the guy never fell ever and yeah. I, I, I remember thinking, man, I'm, I hope I can be as good as him someday, you know, and, um, and, but the thing with him was he didn't like to travel. And uh, so as soon as, as soon as, like, as soon as, like, I grew and he, you know, it was like, it was so interesting how the whole thing happened. But, um, I mean, then he got all, like, he just lifted all these weights and got all like yoked and he was just like, Hey, all right. Yeah. You know, and he just, <laughs> God, he's such a character, man. He's so funny. I'll, 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 tell you, I'll tell you one story. This is the one that Rob Machado and I, I just told Rob Machado this once and he, he just you know, forever, forever, he, 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 never forget this one. But, um, I had just, 
Jane, I think I, I, I'd gone up to number one or number two or whatever. And um, I, we had gone to a concert in downtown San Diego. And on the way back, we stopped in at Denny's at like two in the morning or whatever it was. And walked in and Todd was with his friend or whatever. And he goes, hey, all right, girl, number two these days. Yeah, fucking killing it. And uh, laugh that loud that the whole restaurant. <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, Todd." He's like, "Fucking right on, yeah." And he was just like, "Fucking fear those pussies." And, like, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I told Machado that story because Machado ended up number two, you know. And so when I see Machado, we're like, "Number two," and, you know. We just always say that one, but. Anyway, oh, so classic. I was just, I, I love, I love that he felt like confident to say, like to say that. He, we always Didn't laugh care. about him because he had his like, and it's to say, you know, like tracksuit at coffee stains and other stains <laughs> on the road. He's such a creep, you know. And like, it's just, it's, it's, it's just, and Glom, and Glom would just be like, God, Martin, you know, Glom's like Mr. D. He's like. Like, wash your clothes, you know. <laughs> and I always, I always, uh, I just thought everything John said was so funny. You guys are the funniest thing ever. <laughs> oh, his one liners, it was like, like, hey, guy, or, or whatever. Like, he had, yeah, oh, what's up, TR? And he's got his like little bit of like this, and he's, you know, what's up, TR? Fucking Satan. <laughs> <laughs> so classic. How about uh, um, another one of your buddies that just, man, he has such a dry sense of humor, but I just, I, he just, something about his humor makes me just, I just lose it. He's so freaking funny is Doug Silva. Oh, Silva. Yeah. Uh, I got a good story about Silva. So he lived in the, I lived for one year, my dad moved down to, um, I, my mother moved to Las Vegas with her boyfriend to do some work, some shows that they were doing out there. And I'm like, I'm not moving out there. I'm surfing, mom. You know, and, that, and so it wasn't even an argument. It wasn't even like, no, yeah. It was like, okay. So my dad was like, all right, I'll move down. So he moved down from Orange County. And he, for some reason, instead of moving to like Encinitas, where I'm from, he's like, I don't want to live there. He, he wanted to live in Solana Beach. And so I, that made me go to a different school, the whole thing. Like when I think about it now, I think like, I wish I could have said, yeah, it's, what, it's five miles difference and I get to go to the same high school with all my friends. Like, I got to go to a new school with all these new people. Like, huh. but it is what it is. So Silva lived in, we live, I live on these apartments that were right out on the cliff at um, in Slotta Beach and Silva lived in the ones next door. And like, he's 14, I'm 15. And I'm like, I'm not fucking, he's younger than me. Like, I can't let the guy beat me. Like, there's no <laughs> way. Like, it was just like, no way. Every, in everything. We play ping pong. So we're playing ping pong. We're like, right? But Silva is one of these guys that like, he's like, his, his tension's like building and building. And so the better you're playing the, and you're getting him, you can feel him going, oh, oh. And then he, he gets one and, and he's like stoked. He thinks it's a winning shot. And then you save it. He goes, oh, no. And then uh, and, he, and he saves it. And he goes, yeah. And then, and then he saves that one. And he goes, oh, no. And he, and, and he can't get it, and he just loses it. Ah! He throws the ping pong paddle, <laughs> and it breaks one of the windows in, in the in the in the rec center. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing, man? You're losing it. <laughs> the ping pong game, like he's throwing it. He's like, he's like, oh, 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> and so. <laughs> Anyway, we went to every contest together, every contest together. So um, we, uh, we went one Salt Creek event. We went two together. He won. I got second. And I was like, ah. But we went together. And we got stoned. We're, you know, we got first and second. We're driving back to Encinitas, you know, <laughs> and we're Slotta Beach. And the guy we were with was a... Uh, family friend that was like a psychologist he was a super cool guy english guy and he was just like uh, you know he just didn't try to control us and we were just like 14 and 15 like yeah blah, 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 you know <laughs> and he was just cool 
So we stopped in at Jack in the Box in um, in uh, in uh, in San Clemente, the one that's there by Trestles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're super stoned, right? And we walk in, and uh, we look at each other like, "All right, all right, I'm just, <laughs> <like>, uh, <laughs> just gonna, <laughs> just gonna get." You know, a hamburger, French fries, and coke. It's like real easy. Just get in and get out. <laughs> so, so we get up there. We get up there. We get up the courage to go in. We walk, we walk in, and, it, and the lady goes, Can I help you? <laughs> he goes, Hamburger, French fry, coke. <laughs> Come here, buddy. And we just lose it, dude. We both fall on the ground. We're laughing so hard. We couldn't even have. Come here, bud. Come here, see? Come here. Hi, big guy. Hi, TR. Hi, TR. Hey, buddy. We literally, we literally said, when he said hamburger, french fries, coke, he goes, he goes, he goes, yeah, may I help you? He goes, hamburger, french fries, coke. Like, <laughs> and and I, I just went, I did one of those, I couldn't even like, you know, and we had to actually walk out. We walked, we were laughing so hard. We, we walked out of Jack in the Box <laughs> to, cool, to cool down. Didn't even order. We tried to walk back in four or five times. And every time we just, <laughs> we just laughed again. It was I'll never ever forget it. And every time I go by there, every time I drive by that jackalope box, I'm always like, "Hey, your friend, my friend. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> oh man! Oh, you know. The best. Uh, hey, buddy. Hey, now. I had to show it to you. Thing is sick. Yeah. Is it, a, uh, is it a glider? It's a Chris Craft. Oh. A Christensen. Chris Craft, so it's like, dude, it just, it just, get. I got one of these S-wing fins in it. You seen these things? Let's it's see the shape. Fin. See the sh Have you seen these S-wing fins? Let's see the profile. Oh yeah. No, this board's pretty long. So. Uh, oh wow. Sick. Yeah, this thing is like a guaranteed catch any wave. Catch any wave you want. I mean, and you gotta like see way ahead of time what you're gonna do. Yeah. You know. That um, thing looks like the dream. Yeah, I've got a I've got a skip drive too that's eleven foot, but this this one's all newer. That's all. Oh. And um that's what I rode yesterday. It was like half a foot. I just had to get in the water. I was going to surf this morning, and then I just, yeah, I kind of, somebody said something about videos with buffering. I, I don't know. I just, right now, it's like, it's like we just put the ship in the water, and I got to make sure that uh, there's no leaks or yeah. before we put it in the open ocean. Smooth you know, sailing. For sure. The actual videos and everything are all awesome, but it's just about the, the developers and stuff. And we have, we have high level developers and everything. We, spent a lot of money to to make sure it's a qu high quality website and stuff so yeah we didn't spare any we didn't spare anything to make sure so that uh the main point was to make it easy and quick you didn't have to press a bunch of buttons and do all this shit in order to train you could just press two buttons and bam you're away you know mm -hmm. i was remembering how funny kong was too man i never got any of that he didn't like me um, and I never got any of that until uh, I met him later in life. And then he was like, I, he was hilarious. And I was like, oh my God. And I had such a cool time with him. We went to that Ponape, that uh, pea pass in, um, in Micronesia. And I had such a good time with him. And I just thought, how funny is that? I've spent years with this guy and never didn't. I, I, it's like I know him, but I spent no time close to him just surfing with him seeing him and saying like hey you know that kind of hey you know like kind of thing and and like and then we were just like best friends 
love you, brother. You know, like from that point forward, which was in 2000, two or 2000 somewhere way back there you know and so yeah i uh i actually plan on calling him because he he told me about a year ago he was having a difficult time with his takeoff and um and i i was like oh yeah I, I, yeah I, I got something he's like once i'm up it's all good i go yeah of course because you, you you know but the takeoff part and no one's ever done a formally how to take off you know <clears throat> and uh not like this anyway but it's one of the most basic things, but it's also one of the most difficult. It is one of the most difficult. And, um, and um, I, I've never seen anywhere online or in videos or anything that is as um, complete as what I have. And, um, and it's, you practice it. <clears throat> You know, and I have the practice videos, and you practice it, and practice it, and you and you, just like you would, um, just like you would in martial arts, you practice and you practice and you practice and you practice, you practice, and then when the real life comes, you don't really have to think about it. It's like the Karate Kid wax on wax off thing. You just you got it. It's something you own, and that's what you want to. You that's what you want when the wave of the day is coming to you. And everybody's going, go TR, or, you know, uh, or go calm. Woo, yeah, buddy, you know. You want to be like, I fucking own this shit. Like, the takeoff's the last thing I'm worried about. I'm, you know what I mean? It, and I tell you, I have felt so much pressure, you know, when, when I go surfing and the, when the wave of the day comes and it's a bit of a late drop, you know. I mean, I, prior, to, prior to, to doing what I do, I, I had I, I stumbled on my takeoffs a bunch too and I and I'm like what the fuck I feel like the biggest kook ever and I'm like wait I, what what I used to be one of the best in the world and I can't even take off what the fuck really frustrating but it's just that what you when you're an athletic little kid you can learn something wrong and pull it off because you you're you're agile and athletic and and you're lighter and all these things but if your technique isn't isn't sound eventually when your physicality starts to wane you can't rely on that anymore but if you have real good technique you just rely on physics you know and leverage and gravity and you know what i mean and you keep yourself physically uh you try to you know you you, you do have to keep yourself mobile uh you don't have to be a, a contortionist you don't have to be a yogi you don't have to you don't have to be you know you know ultra flexible you do have to be you know somewhat flexible but you don't have to be you know you know you don't have to you know you don't have to you know be like i said like you don't have to be extremely uh flexible to do it you just have to know how to do it and then and practice it just like you would um you know anything that you want to want to keep yeah, if you want to, like a knife, you know what I mean? Like eventually the knife's going to get dull. You have to sharpen it. You know what I mean? So. Absolutely. Well, that's cool that, that you are in touch with Kong. And um, speaking. He's on my of, list. He's on my list of people to, to call. And, and uh, Gary Green, too, told me he was having a real tough time with his takeoff. I noticed that Novak was having a tough time with his takeoff. I heard Shane and rabbit talking on a podcast talking about well they call it a pop-up i don't call it a pop-up because you don't pop and you you don't pop and and you, i i think if you try to pop up that's where you get all that's where all the problems come from and the best in the world don't pop to their feet john and kelly and then they don't pop to their feet they do what i they do exactly how i um i do the i do the i teach it so Classic. I think we had a little ESP moment there because the next person that I wanted to ask you about was Bugs. Because I know that you and I grew up at a time that when we were little kids, man, Sean, MR, Rabbit, you know, Mike Ho, we had such an amazing lineup of, of, uh, of guys to look up to at the surf movies on the big screen was what it was all about back then. Superstars, and, yeah when i mean my whole deal 
as I was a kid, it was kind of all about Australia. That's all I really cared about. And my final year of high school, I, I saved up um, in my, that pizza parlor and washing dishes. And the day that I, that I graduated high school, um, I think that weekend I had my going away party at my house. And then I went to Australia for six months, my first big wow. trip. And I'd always, Rabbit for me was always number one. It was, he was always my favorite surfer when I was a kid. You know, everybody had their, their kind of Michael Jordan. Mine was Rabbit when I was a kid. And then I went there and got to meet him and got to have beers with him at the patch on Dollar Night and got to surf Kira with him. And I mean, what a beautiful human. I mean, just a gem of a man. But tell me about what it was like for you when you finally got to meet and hang out with Wayne Bartholomew after <laughs> I imagine idolizing him when you were a kid. Oh, man. I mean, when I, I got to, I went to West Oz with um, Aki and Rabbit and uh, Matt Branson in 85. Uh, and um, Rabbit was real quiet. And I, I kind of um, was zoning in on him and, you know, I'm a pretty observant guy. And um, I kind of thought, I'm like, wow, he's probably thinking I'm out of here. You know, like this is the end of my, this is sort of the end of my career. What am I going to do now? And like, I was just like so stoked. I was like, woo, you know, I'm here. And I'm like, woo. And, you know, and I was like, I noticed that he didn't have the same woo thing going on. And I was like, and he must be just tripping him. Like, you know, here it is. We're all fresh and new. And he's, I mean, he would have only been 30 or something. You know what I mean? Like, like, cause he's a, a Sean, the whole crew is about 11 years old than me. And I was, I was 19. So it was kind of a, yeah, it was, it was really interesting. And then it was, there was a time when, um, I was at a North shore party and, and talking with rabbit and, and um we were both had a couple of drinks like mike Diffenderfer was there i was talking with him he was telling me stories it was just amazing and i i i remember rabbit was like man i'm gonna fucking you know i'm gonna fucking oh yeah oh yeah i'm gonna fucking see the relief i'll be fucking taking off out there and i'm like i will too and he's like yeah but i'll be fucking right right out there mate. i'll be fucking out there and i'm like i will too i'm out there too man i'm fucking into it <laughs> love that shit He's like, I fucking love it, man. I fucking love it. And we started getting into this thing, like, I'll take off in a bigger way than you, you know, kind of thing. And I was like, I don't think I'm not going to fucking go. Like, I, I was in that, <laughs> that age where I was like, I'm fucking the new, I'm coming, you know, like, I'm not pussing out. Don't worry. I'm not, and in a way, I'm like, I'm not going to let you guys down. You guys are fucking big time bravado. I'm not going to be the new guy that's going to puss out. Don't worry about me. I'll be out there too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was like a drunken, we were both drunk, you know, I'm like, I mean, he was going, yeah, 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 will, will you, will you, yeah, yeah, you know, and I was like, fuck yeah, I will, fuck yeah, <laughs> you know, it was like classic. But that's um, a real Aussie thing, you know, it's almost like they've got that rugby kind of spirit. It's different down here, it's, it's like where I live, it's a lot more, I think, it, and it's, I, it's, it's hard for me to even gauge because I, I got two little kids and I'm kind of just in my daddy and mama, you know, little kid world. And I, I don't drink very much. I just, I, I kind of won't even let myself drink if I haven't surfed, you know, and, um, just, and I, I, I just don't drink very much and I, I'm not, you know, I don't go down to the pub and all that stuff, but I did and I loved it and I felt very comfortable, um, especially in new in, in newcastle you know and um and also on the gold coast there's like you know like a, a very community very you know like the older surfers and the older guys and they know each other because they did their their clubs together and they all come down and like you know it's a very community thing and i really i really like all that there, there are a lot of really funny people like hilarious funny people, you know knowing good comic timing and stuff and uh but yeah, the, 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 the footy is a big deal here. And, um, you know, also in Victoria, and they play Australian rules football, which is kind of a mixture of, of sort of a mixture of soccer and gridiron and rugby. And it's a pretty awesome game. 
Um, I haven't really paid attention too much yet, but um, but whenever I do watch it, I it's it's pretty um, it's it's a pretty dynamic game. But um, you know, uh, uh, the surf people are very 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 passionate about surfing and very um, um, opinionated about it, and um, and also self deprecating and um and there's a lot of history and um like the, the guy there's a guy here in town that builds all my fans and he's just he's such a nice guy like he's he is the epitome of a nice australian guy and um and, and passionate and uh really into he, he made his first board when he was 14 and he makes all his own boards makes his own laps makes his own leashes makes his own fins um and um yeah, he's um, he says the funniest stuff. Like, you know, the other day he said something. I don't know what I said, but he it was he goes, "Oh, it's like rare as rock and roll shit." <laughs> and um, and uh, what? Yeah, and like, I was like, "What?" And I I I, I hadn't heard that one. And I was like, "Oh, that's fucking funny." He said some other ones too that are like really fucking really. I can't think of it right now, but he says some great ones. But no, I think that uh. Um, you know, another really around that same time and kind of been right after that trip, I flew to Hawaii and I was with Shane, um, Shane, and I didn't have a ride to the North shore and Shane's like, yeah, I'll give you a ride, but, um, I got to buy a car first. I'm like, okay. And so <laughs> we went to the car yard together and Shane was my here. You rabbits your guy, but Shane was my, like, okay. I, I, he was my like favorite server. And um, so I'm like at the car yard in Shane and, you know, and, and uh, he's, but, but he's different at this point because he's riding those weird boards. He's not as like, I mean, he was my hero when I was 13 and 14 and stuff right. like that. Now I'm 19 and um, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not as in awe. I'm still kind of in that zone where I'm like, this guy used to be my favorite surfer. And like, now I'm going to buy a car with him and like, and so we bought this car. He he bought his car and then drove me out to the North Shore and he was driving out there and I was like, you ever done mushrooms? And I was like, hey, what are you doing? Like, don't try to like, you know, don't take me off my, I'm fucking focused here. I want to be the best guy in the world. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to, you know. <laughs> and like, but Shane and I are still best friends. Like, I love the guy. You know, I have his number. He has my number. I call him. He comments on there. He's like, the key. And, you know, He's just, he's awesome. He has such great passion and enthusiasm oh. and he's a different thinker and he has so yeah. much experience and just, dude, he has so much to offer. I really, really like Shane. And then MR, I got a board from MR. He made me a 20 and I got the, and I got the whole write up and he wrote it down. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm talking to MR about a board. And I was like, you know, if I could just forward my, my 13 year old self, here's MR making me a surfboard, you know, and just, you know, and, and, um, and then Sean too, like, I remember the first time I, Sean said, you know, Hey Brad, how are you? I'm like, he fucking knows my name. He actually knows. He didn't just say, Hey dude. He went, Hey Brad, he fucking knows me. I'm like, I was so pumped, you know? So yeah, it, it, it's a, uh, well, it's a long time ago, but man, it's, there's, um, I mean, dude, have you seen have you seen any of these regurgitated photos of Larry Bertelman? They're so incredible. Oh, they're so incredible. So incredible. Like, like, like I, I, I was saying the other day because I, uh, Tudor always chimes in on my thing, and Tudor put something up of Bertelman, and I just say, hey, when you were like a baby, I, I was about thirteen. I was skating with my friends in in Encinitas, and we always skated these driveways by stone steps. And one day we pulled up, and there was there was Larry Bertelman and Dane and Mark Lydell and, um, and, uh, Joy Brand. They were all there, uh, uh, cause they were visiting Don Takayama. I think Buttons was there too, maybe. And, um, and I just, I was like, Oh my God, like this is the first time I seen him in real life, you know? And I was like, <gasps> I like hit my friend. Like, oh, <laughs> Berman. I was like, oh my God, they're skating our spot. I was like, you know, and and I remember that Berman was just such a coop to me. And I was like, 
it threw me off. And I was like, I was thinking like, did I do something wrong? What did I, what did I do? You know? And then I remember thinking, <laughs> I was like, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of walked away from my, and then Dane was really nice to me. And I was like, I don't like Berlman. <laughs> I don't like Dane. I don't like Dane. I don't like Berlman. You know, but, and, and I was, and I, and I was such, a, I was that kid that I was like, fuck man, when I'm a pro, I'm never going to be a poop to a kid. Fuck that. You know, and I tried my best <laughs> to, to never be a coup to, to not, even, not just a kid, but just any fan. You know, I've tr- tried to just give people that, like, like the time because I, I, can, I can still remember how clear it was and how excited I was to see this person. And if they're like, yeah, whatever, it was kind of like, eh, you know, like, oh, you know, I don't know, you know. And um, so uh, I, I still love a lot of those photos of Larry Bertelman and I love his, uh, I mean, he was so influential with his big Afro and his big cars and his colors of the boy. And, you know, I was like, God, being a pro server looks like the best thing you could ever do with your life. I have to be one. I have to be one mom. And she's like, well, you know, there's other things. I'm all, no, there isn't. <laughs> what is it? Don't even try to take me out. There's nothing else, mom. This is what I'm doing. And you're not going to stop me. <laughs> 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 and I, only, I think I'd only served one contest at that point. You know, like, it was like, I was just, you know, but yeah, lucky. I'm lucky I chose something that, you know, I'm built for, you know, I'm not too mm-hmm. big for it or too small or, you know what I mean? Like, uh, my dad told me a story of his brother. His brother, his half brother was, uh, wanted to be a gymnast and he was just too big for it, you know? Mm-hmm. and. and when you're a gym, you want to be an Olympic gymnast, you have to be in the five, five range or, you know, five, three, five, 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 six, you know, you don't, can't be much taller than Italo, you know what I mean? And, um, you, you know, and, and so he would always tell me, you're lucky you're not, you're lucky how you're built that on what you chose, your sport that you chose or your, your art form or your endeavor or whatever you want to call sir, which it's kind of a, it's a lifesaver really. It's a total mental health, uh, best mental health you could ever have, but it's just so much, you know? And so now with wave key, I just, I, I, if I don't surf, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to do 15 minutes of wave key. And then it, I know that my next, I just kept my, 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 my surfing muscles, the feeling of surfing in my body. So my next surf is going to be, it's, I'm, I'm going to be good. You know? Absolutely. And I think a lot of surfing has been very conservative and, when people are real different, they have uh, they haven't been embraced as much as I think in skateboarding, for instance. I think skateboarders are like they're they're much more. Uh, I think uh, what's the word? They're more um, endeared by the skate community when they are weird, when they are artistic, when they are different, when they do come across with something. You know, like skaters are all going one direction and then a guy will come up and skateboard in cowboy boots and the super long hair and, and be totally into Iron Maiden and fucking, and everybody go, and, and all these punk rockers go, that's fucking rad because that's actually punk rock and that's fucking who he is. And I think with serving a lot of times, and I felt this before because I am, I'm unafraid, I'm daring, you know, and I feel people go, mm, you know, whatever. But then as soon as usually I surf, then they go, oh, okay. Well, he still rips, so you know. Um, I guess that's cool, you know. But like, <laughs> it's, I, 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 you know, like, I, like Sterling Spencer, I fucking rips, and he's so smart and funny, and like, he's such a asset to the surfing world, you know what I mean? And and I and and I think there's a lot of people out there that uh, that um, maybe more now are it's more accepted now, but there's definitely been time where you stepped off and i mean even when christian fletcher came on and stuff like that like i remember we i remember personally thinking like uh like fuck he's getting so much magazine coverage like fuck like it was kind of a weird it was kind of like us being immature like not like being an immature maybe athlete that's in like a little bit of a bubble or whatever like it's like fuck i'm out here just fucking trying my best to like win these contests and you know be the best surfer in the world and do all this stuff and i get a postage stamp fucking shot this big and then 
there's like seven shots of Christian Fletcher doing this thing. Like, why, why is he getting all this fucking coverage? But now that I'm adult, I understand. It's like, because he's more exciting. Because what he was doing was cutting, was doing shit that no one else is doing. It's fucking exciting as fuck. So like, like I, I kind of, I think, it's kind of weird how, like, I think that the Fletchers think that somehow, somehow uh, Christian wasn't accepted, but he, he was, people loved it and they still do. They, he still, they still, he's still like the godfather of these heirs and all this stuff, but it, it's kind of a, like more people like that, I think, need more. Um, um, there needs to be more acceptance of that kind of stuff because people like that push the envelope. Now, when it gets down to like style, if you compare like to Tom, it's it's not the same, right? Like like Christian doesn't have the fluidity thing that Tommy and the beauty thing that Tommy has, right? Now, in the air, he's probably as beautiful as it gets. He's got the sickest fucking air style, and you know what I mean. Like he's, you know what I mean. But when he gets back down on the wave. That's where I think a whole group of people are like, I, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. He doesn't. I don't like how he does a cutback. His his knees are pointing opposite directions. I don't like it. But that, so what if you don't like it? It's still fucking. It's it's it, it it's still rad. And it, and you can take what he's got and then put your own. And then you are you like Tommy? Well, do the Tommy surfing and then th- and and throw yourself in the air. And then that's when you have like a Slater show. You know what I mean? And like, oh, whoa. Do you know what I mean? But, but, but like actually not appreciating something like what, what Christian brought, you know, is just, is, is totally missing the point, I think. And I think that there needs to be more of a, um, a, a more embracement of, 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 of uh, people that, that, that do things that surf differently, you know what I mean? And, and, and act differently and, you know, and, and, I don't know, you know, like as long as there isn't a, as long as there isn't a, a maliciousness going on, I think whenever that happens, it's like, yeah, fuck off. you know what I mean? But you know what I mean? Like as long as you're, you're not malicious, but the, like Ozzy Wright too, like he's, he doesn't, for, for me personally, I like most of the serving, I, I don't like his actual style. I love it when he gets in the air. I think he looks insane in the air too. And I think he's got a killer persona and he's a super cool dude and he probably I like all so many things, but I, I, I don't necessarily like his his sort of stance and style, his super wide stance. But yeah, but there's uh, enough room really in awesome. surfing for all different different um, aspects of it. That's the cool thing. Yeah. And there's people who don't like fucking who, who can think that, that that you know whatever smooth surfing's boring. Yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's there's the whole faction of the mid length guys that are like. You know, I, I, I find some of it really boring. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to see more I want to see more critical surfing in the pocket, you know. 90s power surfing is what I like to see, but in a modern twist, you know? Absolutely. Kind of going back onto that like air innovators um, category, did you get a chance to see Kevin Reed in the early eighties? Just a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit. I was like, whoa, that guy's way up in the air. He was the only guy I saw, aside from Bud Lamas, that did tr- real airs. I, 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 when I moved to Huntington, I, I was like, whoa, Bud just actually flew in the air. Like, I was like, Fuck, that was a real air, and he stuck it. And I was like, oh, my God, you know? And I think Kevin, I might have seen him in, in Santa Cruz when I came when I was like 15 and 83. Do you uh, see him in the stubbies at Trestles? I think so. It's super big. It was boosting. Sport, art. What is surfing overall for you? I mean, it's, it, it really is, to break it down to the most simplified, simple, simple, simple thing, it is being, it is feeling the power of the wave the entire ride so that could be that that is surfing if you're in your mind if you've got an agenda if you're 
Uh, if you are, for instance, a lot of surfers look very acrobatic, look very gymnastic. And for them, it's probably a sport. They're probably thinking sport. You know what I mean? Right. I know for a while, and it has to do with their mentors or who they look up to, who they're talking with. And for me, um, you know, I thought of it as sport for a while, but I also always knew it was an art too because of my dad's influence because diving is a sport, but it's an artistic sport. My Very dad, my dad always has said to me like, look, all artistic sports, all of them, it's about feel. It's about feel. That's where, that's where the higher intelligence is on it. So, you know, Wade King is all about feel. It's all about connecting to you and connecting to your own, you know, so that, you know, this is what we, this is what we use to serve this body and especially your feet. Your feet are the, the bottoms of your feet are what you do the surfboard and knowing every millimeter of your feet and having a clear path from your brain to your feet without interruptions or stop signs or, you know, you know, construction work or whatever it is, it's straight to your feet. You connect, that's your connection to the board and your board is connected to the wave. So that's what wave key is. It is it's, it's cultivating more, uh, more awareness, more fully, um, 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 there's no, uh, yeah, like you, you're just, uh, what, how do I say it? Like it, it's pretty much, um, you know, there's, there's, there's people talk about, you know, in samurai, the sword is, 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 an, is, an, is, is just an extension of your body. And really the surfboard is, is, it should be an extension of your body so that you can connect to the wave. And the way that you connect to the surfboard is through the bottom of your feet. And so wave key is heavily focused there's not a single thing you do on WaveKey where you aren't aware of your feet because that's what you're doing with the surfboard. There's no like, put your arm here. Like all the, <laughs> it's been driving me crazy watching WSL. See the arms sweeping through and it's like, no, it's not the arms. Because I can show you, a, I can show you a cutback or a snap where a person does something completely different with the arms and it's way more effective. It's not the arms. The arms are an extension of your, of, of your, if you, if you can relax them, they can be an extension of your, um, of your personality or your expression, or, or you can, or you can, or they can be, um, uh, what do you call them? Accents, but they, 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 they are not the, the, they're not the prime thing. So wave key goes into the center of the body and down into the feet and then teaches people like when you do, when you want to control a surfboard to get from here to there, uh, when you, this is how you go down and load it up to be able to spring to get over there. Now you can do it in all different types of ways, all different types of styles. Everybody's got different bodies and different, you know, different things. You know what I mean? I know two people are going to surf exactly alike, and this is not about building clone and, and, you know, and, and this is not about muscle memory. This is about body awareness, totally different than muscle memory because we are not riding the same wave over and over and over and over again. We're not, we're not, we're riding a different one every single time, unless you're going to the wave pool. But I beg to, to see that some of the wave pool waves are a little bit different based on wind or who knows, or backwash did something different. You can't control water perfectly. You know right. what I mean? And so there's just, it's about going beyond the technical, but you do need to know some technicality to get you there. It's the same kind of in music where you, you learn to play the guitar. You got to do this. You got to, you learn a few things. You don't have to know a lot of people that are too pedantic with guitar tend not to have too much soul. And then, you know, some people you go, Hey, is that a B or is that an A? I'm like, I don't even know what it is. I just feel it. And they're, you know what I mean? So you get like Carlos Santana master class apparently. I, I got to go watch it, but apparently he doesn't even really talk about technique. He's just like talking about your passion and playing what you love. And, you know, and, and that, this is, this is what wave key is. It's not here to tell you what to do. It's just to show you what's possible. You know? Cool. So nuts and bolts of wave key. Is it a course people can take define exactly um, how we, yeah, how I, we I, can I, benefit I, from it. 
Sure. I put it into a um, two courses and um, uh, fundamentals one and fundamentals two because uh, the fundamentals one is uh, takeoff, bottom turn, top turn, front side and back side, uh, natural foot and goofy foot. And, and then fundamentals two is uh, cutback, roundhouse cutback with a rebound, um, tube ride, uh, basic floater and sort of a, a you know a, a basic air nothing really nothing really crazy but you know that's backside front side natural foot and goofy and when you do all of them together in a complete flow it's uh, 28 I call it each one of those things is called a form mm -hmm. so I call uh, basically I do 28 form as my base as my base um, so that means I get on the floor, I take off, I do a bottom turn. Oh, prior to it, I pull up a wave in my mind. I don't just do this as movement like, like people at the gym on the treadmill watching a TV. I, I do this mentally. I pull up a wave that I want to ride. I might pull up one locally here. Uh, if it's going to be big, I might actually pull up a bigger wave and, and, and that'll change my movement a little bit and probably change my course of uh, my choice of maneuvers. So I might not be doing a, a, a basic air on like a, you know, an eight foot wave of bells. That's a high probability I'm not. <laughs> but I pull up a wave, I take off. I go into a bottom turn, I do a top turn, I do a cutback, I get a tube ride, I go into a floater, and then I do a basic air. Then I turn around and I do a switch foot, same thing. Then I do a backside, and then I do a backside switch foot. So that is the fine, that's, that's what you get after a year of a course. Mm -hmm. and, all, and then throughout all of that, there's transitions of working on your transition, working on your smoothness, working on your, like the, like the difficulty in a roundhouse cutback when you, a lot, of, a lot of people lose speed at the end of the cutback and don't get a pure uh, uh, rebound. And there's a reason for that. And I go through that in the, in the course. And so you get, so the first, you get, um, you know, you start with the takeoff. And you, um, you choose whether you want to start with your backside or your front side. You, got, you have 21 days to get it wired. So there's, a, there's a, a video that explains how to do the takeoff. Now, some people might be going, I know how to take off. I'm like, but do you? But do you know how to take, like, you know, like, do you? Do you know how to take off at a slab? Do you know how to take off at a backwashy, sucked out beach break and nail your feet and be able to cap, take off behind the peak? Do you know how to take off at a point wave deeper than everybody else to make the section? Basically, then after the 21 days, your first, you know, you get the first, you have a choice of, of two lessons. You could, you can go to the backside, you can, you can go to the backside takeoff. Let's say you chose frontside takeoff, for instance. You got that wired over, over the three weeks. The way I structured it is sort of like the first week, you're getting, you're getting used to it. The second week, you, you start to practice it, and there's some short practices. they are about two minutes. And I urge people not to overdo it. I tell people not to try too hard and just, just get, it, get it so you can start to build some flow. And then on the third week, I've got long practices, and they're about six and a half minutes. So they don't, you know, this isn't a big time thing from people. Like you can run, uh, you, you'll be sweating by in, in 10 minutes, but it's not necessarily like a designed to be a workout. It's much more sophisticated than a workout. So first week you, you, you work out the technique of it. Second week, you're kind of like, you know, you know, you're massaging it, you're getting it, you know, and third week, you're starting to make it a part of your being. And you start, you can probably start to feel it in your surfing, stuff like that. Then after those 21 days, you get uh, two new lessons open up, a choice of one or the other. So you can either, so if you chose front side takeoff, it'll, the, 
the front side bottom turn will be available or the back side takeoff. You can be like, I want to stay on my front side. So I choose uh, front side bottom turn. For 21 days, same thing. And, but, at the, at the, um, but also what you're given um, is a combination video. So you can, pra you can practice takeoff to bottom turn. So then after that 21 days, you're, you're given two, more, two choices again. You can go back to your to backside and do the takeoff, or you can move on to the top turn. You move, move on to the top turn. Again, you got that three weeks to get it wired, and there's the combination videos of takeoff, bottom turn, top turn, so you can start to build this flow. So it goes in that direction. Then um, that's fundamentals of one. So then you automatically, after the top turn, you go, you go back to backside and you fall, and, that, and that'll open up backside takeoff, backside, bottom turn, backside, top turn. And then when you finish that, then fundamentals two starts. And it goes like that. And it, it's about a year. And it's, it's like, you know, anybody who tells you you're going to get good at surfing in 25 minutes or, you know, you know, one day or something like that is full of shit. I, mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't know who you are. I don't know who that person is would say that thing. There's no way. Surfing is very, very, very hard. And what, we're, what we aim to do is simplify how to get better. And, but it takes time. It's the Absolutely. same as if you were going, it's the same you're going into a martial arts class, you know, like, hey, uh, sensei, when am I, oh, take me to be a black belt. He's just like, yeah, shut up and just come to class, you know? Like, I mean, I don't tell people to shut up, but basically, you know, uh, martial arts is a lot hard more hardcore and they they don't put up with that but you know if you come every day for a year two years years five years you, you know what i mean you're you're going to be a pretty uh proficient martial artist depending on your focus and all that stuff so same with same with wave key it's going in that same direction and wave key is not surfing so i'm not telling people to try this in the water so when you go surfing your aim is to connect in with the ocean and connect to the wave and shut your brain off and open up your feeling so you can feel it. And it's pretty difficult because our egos want to try it. I want to try it. I want to try it. And you'll just be like, shit. And I know this from experience. And um, this is what I was finding with my students, right? Like I give them some tips prior to wave key and, they, and I can just see it. They're thinking too much. I'm like, yeah, you know, you're thinking too much. Just let it go. Gotta let it go. Gotta let it go. You know, and it's like, and in Aikido, they say, learn and forget, learn and forget. You know, so that you can, so that you can make the the movements a part of your being, and um, that's that's wave key in a sort of in a, in a nutshell, right there. And you can do like it's great for people that are have had injuries. Like if you hurt your sh shoulder, for, you can't surf, but your legs are fine. You're, um, you live far away from the beach, you, you know, uh, you had to move away from the beach for a job or a, an ailing, um, you know, relative, you, you know, and you can only, you know, you can only surf like, you know, on either on the holidays or the weekends or whatever it is, but, you know, and let's say you're like, okay, I'm ready to surf now and it's six foot and you haven't surfed for a while. You're like, ooh, ooh whoa, you've been doing wave key, you're going to be like, Woohoo! Excited. I'm excited to just get one. You know, instead of like, okay, I hope I. And the idea is like the wave of the day comes right to you. You want to be like, yes, not like, okay, okay, I hope I, I hope I better stick this take off. Everyone's watching. Gotta, you know, and when you're 16, that doesn't even come to your mind because you're surfing every day. And, you know, although some people start with some pretty bad habits, and we have friends that, have that crappy takeoff of it, the duck leg. I'm not very good at takeoffs. I'm, I've never been like excellent at it, you know? I look at Tom, his, look, his are just like, it's like he looks like a, he looks like a, not a lizard, like a, like a, you know, just a slimy, he just slimes up on his board just so elegantly. And it's like, there's no way he's gonna fall. 
right? You know, I mean, he gives you no idea he's going to fall. And then there's some people that you're like, oh, 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 you know? But I, I, even, even Aki at uh, Jay Bay when he stood against Tommy a, a few years ago, he was like stumbling to his feet. And I, I knew exactly why. You know, I was like, he hasn't been surfing, but it's more than just surfing. When you get older, you, your, yeah. your body stiffens up. Your body takes a lot of hits. You're, you're, yeah. You get thicker. You, you know, your, your rib cage, which actually should be a rib basket, not a rib cage, but turns out to be a cage when you get older. That's what keeps you from being uh, pliable and moving all that stuff. But I guess... The difference is wave key is specifically about surfing and these other guys doing the surf fitness thing. I think it's great, but you can do all the surf fitness you want and it's not going to spike your actual technique. It's, it's, it's going to, it's going to make you feel good. I, you know, some of them I think are good. Some of them I think are, are over the top. Um, I've done them all. You know, I've done, I've done check, I've done weightlifting, I've done two, you name it. I've just searched around the world. Oh, yeah, that's a new training. Let me try that. Can I get something out of that? Dancing, this, that, the other. I've tried all of it. And some of it I recommend and some of it I don't recommend because it can, it can make it stiff. How about dancing? Yeah, dancing's incredible. I mean, I, I, watch, I watch quite a bit of ballet because... Think about, you know, the surface they have is so hard and the amount of time they devote to their feet. Because you think about it, right? They fly up into the air and then they're coming down. If, if, if they don't land on their feet just right, if they don't land just right on their feet in the perfect spot, they get hurt and they get hurt a lot. And there's, 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 this thing, there's this really interesting um, thing that, I, that, that one of the great ballet teachers said was that he said that he worked with these uh, boys, the 15 to like somewhere 15 to, to 15 to 18, right in that zone. I think he said he had a year and he goes, I wish I had three years because it takes a long time for the legs to mature. So think about that. For the, for the legs to mature, not to get stronger, but to mature in their articulation and their ability to express. In ballet, you have to express a story. So you've got to be able to, you've got to turn yourself into an animal or, you know, a swan or, a, you know, or you've got, you know, you have to turn yourself into a swashbuckling pirate or a, what, you know what I mean? can't have any, you can't be stiff, you know, it's, and, and there's so much power. If you watch them, you go, you go, oh yeah, some, just watch them with the naked eye. It doesn't mean, you don't need to know shit. You just watch and just, you'll see some of them go with full power and you go, whoa, that was insane. And then you start thinking about surfing in the sense of like all the stuff in between the turns. All this, all this stuff in between the turns that it doesn't matter that you don't have to be 16, but you can be 65 and be like, if you can get up and walk around and do stuff, you can go. And that in itself might, might just make your day. So that's, that's, that's what I mean about Wave Kid. It, 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 it's, not, it's for so many different people. Just, but it, it should, you're practicing it, it'll elongate your surf life. It'll keep you from getting injured. It'll lessen the chances that you'll get injured. It'll make you, um, it'll make you probably surf when there's, it, it doesn't look that good or it's super crowded. You know, I, I constantly put forth ideas of like, you know, try this out if it's crowded. You know what I mean? Or try this, you know, rather than going, rather than walking away, try this, you know, and, you know, those types of things. And yeah, it's, um, there's so much more than just, just the surfing part too. There's so much more. So I guess that's, you know, um, yeah. And it's, and it's, it's, I know more now than I did 
you know, three months ago. I'm constantly learning stuff. I'm watching. I watch the best in the world. I watch the very, very best in the world. I'm like, okay, I think he's the best. I think she's the best. You know what I mean? And, and that's the best movement I've seen. All right, that's awesome. And then I watched that a bunch. You know, and I, and I work with them. Um, I work with Taro a lot, like weekly. And Taro is one of the best. He's the most smoothest power. Uh, he is going to be, uh, I'll, I'll put, two years from now, he, I, he, I, I, I mean, I think right now he can beat almost anybody in sort of three foot, three to four foot waves, uh, depending on the hollowness of him, because he hasn't had as enough experience in the really, really hollow stuff. But like performance wise, I put him up against anybody, but in two years, the, the level of strength and what happens with his body, I think he'll be, uh, he'll be, not only will he be able to go again, like put up a solid thing against the best, uh, he will, he looks so good. He looks so rubbery. He looks like a version, a, a mixture of sort of Larry Bertelman, Tom Curran. He's got, um, yeah, he's just got some, and it's all because we've like stressed a lot of uh, flexibility. He's had no injuries. He's had no injuries except for you know a cut or something. And he's Remarkable. eighteen. You know what I mean? So uh, he's kind of the he is the the what do you call it? Like he's the student that has stayed the course from eleven years old to 18 so um, and how big a part of his program is wave key uh it's daily yeah it's daily whether it's you know 15 minutes or half an hour yeah, yeah. so he and then when we, do, when, when we do our our sessions they're um, an hour and sometimes they can be two hours he can he, he would come to my house when i lived in l.a and we do two hours and we'd go through footage talk about who was you know Here's Dan Reynolds and slow it down and go through that and be okay, this is what he's doing. You know, so he has his foundation of technique is um, I mean, there was something uh, they wrote in Stab uh, a month ago uh, that just said he didn't even have a cuticle out of place. His technique was so perfect. So but it goes beyond technique. It, it there has to be there has to be that personal expression, that, that competitiveness a little bit, and that that kind of, you know, there's gotta be that personal thing. It can't just be like, if you ever watch like the voice or American Idol, you can, you can, you know, some people are singing and, and you're like, wow, they've got perfect tone and everything, but there's not, there, there isn't, there isn't that grit in it where, and then you hear somebody else who has a totally different voice, but tons of emotion in it. And you're like, oh, I like that one, you know, like Eddie Vedder, for instance, you know, like, like his voice is so emotional and so like, it's so special, you know, Joe Cocker. I mean, you can, you know, obviously I can talk about a lot of singers that are like, that are, that, that are famous because of that. And there's a lot of singers that are technically perfect, but so same in serving, you have somebody who's technically perfect, but there's no um, rawness. There's no poison in it. I don't know. You know, there's gotta be some, you know that you're a punk rocker, man. You know what I mean? Like it's got, it's got to have that spark. It's got to have that spark in it, you know? So, um, so yeah, that, that, that part is, I just try to help. Um, I try to help, um, um, the, the student sort of find that their own, you know, rather I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not like hold your hands like this, or I, I barely ever, I ever, barely ever talk about hands. And in wave key, I don't really talk about hands. I, I just talk about the feet and the body. Yeah. So, so the first thing you mentioned, um, or one of the very first things when we started rolling on this, was you said that you have to be present in order to even do this. And so, what do you do to bring your students back to the present moment and what techniques do you teach them so that they can return to the present moment before and during wave key and of course surfing 
Well, with WaveKey, it's a reminding them of their feet and where, you know, the pressure on their feet, because if the pressure, if they're doing, if they're doing a form and their, the pressure on their feet isn't, um, isn't, uh, isn't right. Um, for instance, even in our, our, um, in one of our, um, in one of the promo videos that Connor's in, um, it's way, and this is wave key from 2012. Um, I was teaching him how to, how to get a lot of, um, wit out of a car. And, um, there's a little tiny instance where he goes and he does it. But it's, but when I watch it now, his weight is on his toes mm. and his, his weight needs to be on his heels. So I'm heavily focused in on the feet and what the feet are doing, because if the pressure on the feet isn't right, it doesn't matter what you're doing with your upper body, your, your surfboard is not going to respond. So it's all about the surfboard. So I help, I, I remind them like what to, to keep, keep the wave in their, in their, um, in their mind, you know, the picture of the wave that they're riding in their mind. And then what's the surfboard doing? That's how I, that's how you stay present. And we do wave key real slow so that, um, I, I call it key speed. You do it, you do it at key speed so that you can build the, the, the nervous system. So there's no uh, blind spots in the nervous system all the way through the body. And eventually you can do it at wave speed, which is, which is at, um, uh, regular regular speed and you'd be surprised at how a lot of things aren't very quick they're just timed really well so that's why as an aging surfer you don't have to you don't it, it's not all oh, all lost i'm i'm 40 something now or whatever and it's like uh, i'm not as quick as i used to be you don't have to be quick you, you just your timing has to be good and you have to be efficient with your movement and you can do that you know if you know how to practice it and, and so up to this point, you know, like, I don't think wave key is something that's like, oh, my God, it's from outer space. I think a lot of surfers do sort of fake it and like, they kind of, oh, yeah, and they do stuff. I did. I did from when I was 14 years old. John Glom used to do it. We're like, we used to go, whoo, we used to do with skateboards and, 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 you know, pretend we're surfing. But wave key is a systematic formula. Uh, that, I, that I've developed that I've used over 10 years to get the results so you can follow it and be like ah oh, you can and you can deepen it and deepen it and deepen it and deepen it on it consistently rather than oh it's just I'm doing it this way one time then I'm doing it this way it's like primitive I see some people doing it versions of it I see lots of people going like this and doing this stuff and I'm you know the problem with that is you're teaching yourself how to do it and I I, I think I got to be careful here. Uh, I, 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 I think it's for what you're doing this for, uh, uh, it's wrong for what you want to get. Absolutely. Okay. So, so that, and, and that takes, that's a longer conversation and it's zeroing in and going, well, here, here, look at this. Here's Dane Reynolds' backside bottom turn to top turn. Look what he's doing. Have a look at what you're doing. See? So let's bring it back down to here and then practice it this way and practice it and practice it and then stop practicing it. Let it go. Don't try too hard. Okay, practice it again and then stop practicing it. Practice it again, stop practicing. Get it so that you're not trying too hard. And then when you get in the water and you're, and you're in the zone of being playful and you're not trying to work on surfing while you're surfing, you know, <laughs> don't work on surfing when you're surfing. Do you know what I mean? Just surf, get it, feel it. Don't work on dancing when you're at the party. Just dance. Woo! You know what I mean? Like it's just like, like you're at a party. Imagine being at a party and <laughs> you're working on your dance moves at the party. You're not gonna get a dance. The chicks are gonna be like, what the fuck's he doing? Oh, he's practicing his dancing. Oh yeah. Oh cool. For what? So that he can dance with a bunch of chicks. Well, there's a bunch of chicks here. You know, like oh oh. So, uh, yeah, that's what, you know what I mean? Like, don't practice. And, and you know what? Waves are so elusive. Waves are just so hard. To, you, you're not guaranteed when you get in the water. Oh, I guarantee I'm going to catch 15 today. You get out there, you're like, oh, I, I can see them. They're everywhere. I'm going to, you get two. And you're like, what the? It's just, <laughs> it's just, so if you're in a playful zone, you, you, 
I found when I'm in a playful zone, I'm way more magnetic. They just come to me if I don't have to get them. Because when you're working on something, you feel like you have to get them. And I know this from being a professional surfer. I have to get waves to practice. Fuck, they're not coming to me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it's, in a way, it's kind of a spiritual thing, but without getting too, you know, hippy dippy on it, it's kind of like you're, you know, you, you can't control Mother Nature. So you get in there and just be like, I'm open to whatever you want to give me. <laughs> and then you start going, woo, and then, and, you're, and then boom, you're on it. You're like, ooh, I'm this inside one, super fun. Ooh, kick out, and then someone catches a wave, and then I, like, I've learned to, to be a, when someone's riding a wave and I, I'd actually like to get the wave, I, many years, I'm like, God, I hope that person falls. But then I just thought, what a dick. Like, what a dick thing to think, you know? Like, how about just fucking, woo! And then go, I hope that person makes that thing. I'm like, yeah, they must be so stoked. And try to get into their stoke. And then <laughs> they'll fall. And I'll be like, hey, bitch it. And I'm on it. I mean, but, you know, like, <laughs> it's kind of a, it's not, that, that one's not that easy to do when a real corny one comes through, too. But it is a good place to be. Absolutely. And, then, and when you're in that space, all this stuff that you're practicing almost seems it's more accessible. Yeah. It's easier to do because you're not trying. It's so weird. It's such a humans are, are amazing. You know, well, you've I mean, prepared yourself mentally by all the non surfing things that you do to improve your surfing. Anything you do is going to pay off tenfold, anything at all. And when you get into this level of, of you're tapping into what's always kind of been playtime for us. Uh, you know, that, that physical, you know, get out there and, and you remember Adam's classic uh, physical characters he'd do like in your living room, he'd do like Laird and he'd do like Chris Brown and Deho and he'd go down the line and just have us in stitches. Like Adam Rapogel is like one of the most gifted, like physical mimics on earth. He'd do Gurr like better than, than Gurr. And, yeah, 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 yeah. and so that kind of play, physical, visualization, um, melding, it's kind of like wave key, but the most magic special thing about it is you're doing that for yourself, for your own individuality, because all of us surf a certain way. We all have our own body type, like you said. And this, you're doing that playtime visualization but you're actually doing it with yourself. Like you remember my buddy, Tim Ward, he's yeah. uh, like did all the art for O'Neill and did my logo back yeah. in the day. And, and yeah. he's a super gifted skateboarder and surfer and artist, of course, but he does these, these line drawings and these animations of surfing style. And, and he used to do um, Peabody the Shred Ant and he would do all these characters. And he would make these animations of just fantasy moves, guys doing like 900s on waves and all this different stuff. But the classic thing was in all his drawings, it was his style. Exactly the way that he surfs and that he skates, his little characters would have all, somehow he could tap into those subtle nuances and bring them out in his art because it is that individual. And when you're tapped into that level of surfing, art, music, all these different artistical forms which is why i asked earlier about how you see that definition of sport and art in surfing and not that it has to be defined but i think that like i've tried to explain to people before who asked me that question and rather than than answer it i like to ask them a question what is surfing closer to the 100 yard dash or a salsa dance contest, okay? Uh, I mean, I, I think it's just much closer to the salsa dance uh, or the or ballet or- Exactly, um, so those are clearly considered arts, whereas the 100 yard dash is clearly considered a sport. So it doesn't necessarily define that question, but it gets people into the right, in my opinion, part of their well, brain to where they should be thinking salsa, about it. But, but the difference between the 100 yard dash and the, um, and the salsa dancing or ballet, for instance, is they're dancing to the music. And so the wave is like the music and the hundred yard dash is, is, is a race against another human being. And, um, and you know, it, it's, 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 
it, you don't have to be good looking in your movement to win. And I think even more so it's a race against the clock. Well, it's a race against the clock, but, 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 but to win, you have to beat, you have to beat somebody. You have to be faster than the next person. So absolutely, you know, and, and to get that result, you don't have to be beautiful in your move, movement. Now, what's amazing though, is when you watch the fastest runners in the world, they are beautiful. Correct. So there is something in that is, uh, functionally perfect about it that make makes you go wow you know but i think that with surfing it's that the wave is the music and the better that you the better you know the music or the and it's more like jazz music because it's um you jazz musicians don't necessarily practice tunes they practice in a way but they it's ad lib and they and they listen and they and they go off and they get inspired by, you know, just listen to Miles Davis. It's insane. And it's but, open. Um, they leave room for improvisation. That's part yeah, of the and format. That's what serving is, it's open. It has to, you have to be open. So, you can't, so if you're trying to put this, you know, wave key in the water, you're, you're, you're going off a memory of something that it is an illusion in a way. You, know, you, you kind of can't do it. But what wave key brings is a method, a method of a way to be able to drill down on okay so how do i control the surfboard i uh, i want to do a bottom turn so my weight has to be on my uh, i want to do a front side bottom turn. my weight has to be on my toes how is my weight on my toes the best what's the easiest way for me to put my weight on my toes where i don't use excessive muscle or you know as a lot of people surf from up top thinking that doing something up here is going to change the surfboard and it, and you know like it's it doesn't it, it it the more the more if you my dad always said this if you if you move and it doesn't affect the surfboard it's it's a it's a it's a negative if you move and you do something and the surfboard isn't affected the fact you're, you're you're inefficient so whenever you move something and it could be the subtlest of subtle and it, it changes the surfboard that means your body is in complete um uh completely connected you know what I mean? Like, so, um, I, I just put it, I just, this is a method for people to train and not necessarily, it's training, but it's, it's more sophisticated than training. It's more fun working out and it's more specific than doing yoga. So it's just like, if you're into surfing, this, this is what, um, this is how you can develop this is how you can develop um, and do things maybe you don't know how to do. Like I'm, I used to be pretty good at a layback turn and I haven't done one for so long. And so I'm, 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 I'm doing one on the floor here and I'm, I'm just doing it every day. And, and so when, when, because dude, I'll go in three or four times and not one section will come up for me to do a layback. But if I look for it, it'll, it'll, it'll ruin my whole serve. Absolutely. So I got to just like, I just got to do my thing. And then if it shows up, I'm, ooh, you know, and I, you know, and I'm talking about the ones that like Sonny does, you know, like not the ones where you carve around like this, the ones where you get like a real powerful whip and go, wow. And I don't need to be 15 to do that. Do you no. know what I mean? Like I want to be 55 next year. I want to do way back, but I still like, don't want to, I don't, I don't want to do things that, um, like I don't do tail slides really too much. Like I, like I, I don't throw my, my, my weight into my front foot and try to blow my tail past the lip and all that stuff. Partly because every time I see myself do it, I, I don't like the way it looks. And I think the way that the new guys do it is they lift their foot up and put their, put the foot way far forward on the surfboard. And that takes, um, that takes some time. You know, I could woodshed on it and, and do it and I maybe do it, you know, like at the right time. But I also just, there's a certain, I don't know, I'm at a certain age where I just want to go really, really, really fast without a lot of effort. And I want to just be connected to the wave and, um, and, and kick out a wave going, hoo hoo, that was so fun. You know, that's, that's where I'm, that's what I'm into. And that's why I go surfing. So that's rad. I mean, that's what it's all about really is tapping into that, that 
um, playful aspect of surfing that attracted us to it in the first place. And yeah, you go through all these other different phases and to come full circle, that's is really special. For sure. That's, that's um, and now I have two kids. One's like not even two, and the other one is three and a half or so. And like, dude, I just don't have time to surf. If I do, if I did, I I think I would be kind of I would be not. Um, there's, I can just tell like this is not the right time for me to surf a lot. Like I just I'm gonna miss a bunch of stuff, and they need me, and you know, and so. But when I do go surfing. I want to rip, man. Even if I haven't surfed for two weeks, I just expect myself to rip. And um, <laughs> I'm not okay. I'm not okay with not ripping. Do you, you know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. I'm like, oh, well, I, you know, it's okay. No, I want to fucking rip, man. Like, I mean, I don't want to look like chasing a 25 year old. No, I just want to. I know what feels good. I know when I'm connected to the wave. I know when I, when my rails are sinking in just right. I know what, I know. I, that's what I, that's, I'm fine there, you know? So if I stay on top of doing wave key, I can not surf for three weeks, pow out and surf real, like I can, as long as I wait for it and I don't try too hard, I catch myself a lot uh, trying too hard because I still have a tiger inside me, you know? It's like, ah, you know, like, easy boy, easy, easy. <laughs> you know, but, but I think I, I can speak for a lot of the other guys my age that I was on tour with. They, 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 you, that thing, that pilot light doesn't go out, man. It's still competitive. And you know what I mean? So it's kind of, but it's just about like, you know, what feels right uh, for, for your age and, and um, you know, and what happens if it gets like 10 foot? Do you know what I mean? Like 10 foot, I'm like, whoa, okay. You're like, dude, you wrote 60 foot waves. You, you're fine, man. I'm like, no. I haven't served a 60 foot wave in 10 years. So like, <laughs> you know, uh, 10 foot's like, I don't want to eat it, you know, it hurts, yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't, I don't want to push out either. Absolutely. So it's, so, it's a different you know, that's time now. It's a different, person. it's a different um, era because we're part of a generation of people that never existed before um, in that we've been doing like surfing and skateboarding since we were little kids. Um, when we were little kids, there were no adults that had done these sports since they were little kids. So we're of the first generation. And I saw this amazing video with uh, the skater Eric Ellington recently. Oh, and yeah, it was like a, my life. Radical. It was just like a day in the life. And he's now, you know, he's getting up there in age. Um, and those guys, of course, you know, they were, you know, double flipping down triple sets of stairs and just like the craziest stuff ever to to stay current in in skateboarding and Ouch. so yeah i mean just the gnarliest stuff and he still skates and still rips and i know we're friends with uh, we're friends with uh, my wife was married to uh, a pro skater darren kirby mm -hmm. and um and so she knows eric ellington and salman have gone like you know lots and lots of skaters and um and so we're friends with them and they're, those guys all like to serve, you know? Because Absolutely. And so what Eric was saying that was so profound in his interview was he was saying that we're different from our generation because we never had to grow up. And we, we don't grow up because we do these activities that keep us so youthful that the kind of the whole grown up paradigm is gone. And it's a trip. You know, for me personally, I'm 55 years old. Um, at a, you know, half of my life ago, I decided to commit myself 100% to doing the things I love, which is skateboarding, building cement spots to skate, surfing, and finding waves to suit my surfing, and building everything else in my life around those activities with no compromises whatsoever. Meaning, going to the best places in the world for, the, for that activity, 100% dedication to a strict diet, 100% dedication to, in my case, yoga. And so I never stopped practicing. And I feel like all aspects of my surfing are still improving. Um, because 
I think I compare it to a yogi that's my age or somebody who's a dancer that's my age that never ever stopped. And it's very few people in our age category that have but done that. Have, you know, people, dancers have to stop. Absolutely. They, they go it's, it's, in and out of, of, of jobs and come back to surfing. But, but what happens if you 100% really, really dedicate yourself to surf? I mean, a hammock, a wave, and, and that's the number one focus. And then you do your work and you, and you have your family and you do your other things, but you keep that number one focus. There's really, I feel, no limit to, to surfing longevity if one really applies himself. And I could blow out my back next week and it's, it's all, the story's over, but up until now, that hasn't been the case at all. In fact, quite the contrary. And I film all my sessions and I watch all my f- sessions every day. And I'm super into traditional longboarding when it's small, which has been the biggest releva- revelation for my shortboarding because of the simple fact that I surf 365 days a year. Like there's very few days of the year that aren't good for longboarding. And yeah. then riding other single fins and kind of in between boards that let's say the wind's too strong offshore. You know, I live most of the season in Nicaragua where the offshore wind's a huge factor. So you get into these thick single fins that cut the wind and you're using these different body dynamics to turn it. And then all of a sudden it's glassy and you're on your little shortboard again. It's a completely different, different dynamic. So I feel like it's an artistic life, man. Completely. We can share this with the up and coming generations to let them know the techniques and the lifestyles that are out there for them if they truly want it. Because we're manipulated in a lot of the Western world to follow this really work paradigm where you have to compromise. And then what happens if there's a pandemic and then you lose everything and you could have been surfing that that whole time. Like I have so many friends right now that, you know, it, it sucks. And the good side of it is a lot of them are coming down here to the tropics. They're moving. They're coming with their family. They're dedicating themselves because this was a huge wake up call for them. They're like, damn, I should have been doing this all along, but it's here and it's open. And I mean, I mean, you're talking about, you know, you've dedicated, a, a, you've got a, a dedicated yoga practice and a, and a diet. Then I'm just saying that you dedicate that you take half of your yoga and do, do half yoga and half wave key. You're going to see your performance spike. You're going to, there's yeah. things in there that I put in there that have taken me years and years and years to understand and also things I've learned from non-surfer uh, movement people that I never would have ever thought of in my life through years through you know for I've been serving for 45 years so do you know what I mean but so they're in there uh, full discoveries and stuff like that that are to take surfing to just a whole like how did you even think about that you know how exciting it's to take serving from a two-dimensional thing to a three-dimensional and then beyond, you know? And that's where, that's where, um, I mean, I, I, you dedicate, that's what I've been doing. I've been doing wave key for over 10 years and, um, you know, it's just getting, it's gotten more and more developed. And I mean, I, I don't surf switch with that much, but if I want to, I can just stand up on a wave switch foot like this. I don't have to, and I don't look like, uh, oh, fuck, I'm switch foot. And it I'm keeps not it saying fresh. I get out there and go like, you know, crack and fucking surf the same as, as good as I do natural foot because there's just, there's not enough time. But, but I can, I can, I can get on a left point and I could, if I'm tired, I can surf the whole, I can surf the whole day switch foot and be like, you know, watch my end go, like get better, you know, and, and that in itself is, so, it's so bitch. It's totally, it feels, you know, it feels it's so good to do that. It's continued progression. Sophisticate yourself through that part of it. You know, I mean, eventually what I'll be doing is I'll be doing classes and I'll be traveling and, and doing workshops and doing things and, you know, and sort of almost lifting up, you know, opening up the kimono to like, here's why MR was so good. Here's why John John's so good. Here's what Dane Reynolds is doing that nobody else is doing, you know, but here's how you can train for it. Not saying you're going to do it just like Dane, but this is what he's doing technically. So if you practice on it, I mean, maybe some people can get it, you know, and put their own, everything's all about putting your own twist on it, but at least it gives you 
something to focus on every single day. Now you're lucky, like you said, you surf for 365 days a year, but you're a rarity. Most people are stuck in places where they can't surf every single day, but you can do wave key every single day. You can do it even if you were in jail. And, you know, I loved Johnny Cash going to Folsom Prison. And sometimes I think, man, I would like to go to a, a jail somewhere where there's some surfers that are incarcerated and be like, you know, like, like, hey, you know, here's a workshop. Something you can train uh, in the yard. And the guys, and I, I vision, you know, some of the guys going, I like to surf and I want to surf, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I've never surfed before. And he's like, all right, cool, here, this is how you do it. So, Maybe one day when you get out, you can go straight to the beach. Maybe we'll even come pick you up, you know, and take you to the beach and watch you catch your first ride. I think it'll be an incredible film, you know, project, you know. But you get people purpose, you get people purpose and stuff like that. It just helps them change their life, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's, I'm I'm excited about bringing this to the world. It's so cool because we had so many years of doing this naturally. I mean we were around so many amazing natural coaches. Your dad, of course, Gally, who's like a surfing genius. Like when we were kids, he would break down things to me about surfboards, surfboard fins, and more than anything, my own surfing. Like he would just say to me, like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> like you know, like, like, it, and, and, he, and I'd be like, huh? And he would tell me something and I'd be like, oh, and I would try it. And it was always spot on. Um, yeah, ben, yeah. ben Ipa, I mean, I remember when, um, you know, we used to do a lot of filming when you were being coached by him and, and I used to listen to, to the way that he would break things down and it was just this, the way that he, that he would break it down um, it, to just its most basic common um, thread. I know all these different influences go into what you do. Yeah, and, absolutely. And so it, it's it's kind of a special thing for somebody to be able to, to get all that knowledge. I mean, personally, you, there's so many things that you taught me surfing. I mean, that's the best part of my job as a surf photographer is I get to learn from the best surfers. And one of the things I remember, actually you weren't teaching me, but it was. You're one of the best part. surfing photographers though. Well, thank you very much because I got to watch you guys so much, but I got to, to I remember um, it was actually part of your narration for Ozone, and you said that I really like to hold the power through my turns. And every surfer knows what it's like to put everything into your bottom turn, and you get so laid out that when you do the top turn, you can just barely poke it because you used up all your gumption on the bottom turn. But you always had that, that way of there is no real – exclamation point on it until possibly the very very end of the wave where you're holding your power through your turns to where there's just as much spray through your entire bottom turn even going up the face there's still a bunch of spray and then your top turn still has tons of spray and if you can tell it's the end of the wave then you'll throw the huge hoyo like exclamation hack on it and spray will go flying but if not you you keep on the rail all the way through, get speed out of that, keep that speed. And great surfing, of course, is how you put it all together. It's not just the moves. Sometimes it's not the moves at all. And well, course, well, I mean, I mean, I, I want to speak about that because there was a time there during that ozone thing where I was really focused in on the bottom turns and, and putting as much pressure into the, into the bottom turn and what I learned from that was a couple of things. One is, um, I remember, I think Greg Day was coaching me or, and at the time, or Derek Hine maybe even said it. It's like, dude, bottom turns look insane, but they don't score off the bottom. And, um, uh, and, and that, that was one thing I was like, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm putting too much pressure into the bottom turn. Now, having all the, having the retrospect, and this is what I noticed with Taro, and this is a huge one, Tony. This is a big, big one that, um, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you and give your uh, listeners. As Taro started getting stronger and stronger and stronger, he's getting bigger and stronger. 
And I noticed that he was putting too much pressure into his board. And I was like, I know why he's doing it, because he's getting stronger and it feels good. Now, Taro's always had great pressure on his surfboard, like he doesn't overpressure, whereas like uh, Connor, for instance, uh, uh, is more like how, how I, I was. He puts a lot of pressure in the board, and when, when, the, when the time is right, it's just awesome. He just gouges the wave, and you just love it. Timing's not, when the time is not right to push on it, that's when, that's when Connor needs the coaching to remind him, like, hey, that's not the place to be pushing there's not a power right there like and he's like oh yeah yeah, yeah. but but that our own internal like warrior fighting who knows you know what i mean so that's where teaching is so wonderful and being able to help somebody but i uh, i learned that that there's different pressures to put into the board and also there's no holding whatsoever in surfing it's either an in either a spiraling extension, even if it's only like it never actually stops and you hold. Right. There's no holding. But I see that in coaching a lot. Hold your turns. That's not what you're doing. You might slow down the the um the the um there's the spiraling down and there's the spiraling up of the body. Right. And you might be the spiraling down when your body's going down is when you're unweighting the surfboard. But when you're waiting on the surfboard, you're spiraling up. And so they'll, it, you can slow your spiral up, but you can't stop it and just hold it. That's when you dig rail. That's when you don't get the result of the projection. It's so interesting. But um, I, I, I do remember that, that time of my life, and I was putting a lot, and I was training a lot. I was lifting weights. I was getting strong because that's what Carol was doing, and he was the best surfer, and that's, Tommy was lifting weights, and that's what we're all doing. We're lifting weights now because we, we want to be more powerful. But the power is in the wave. It is not in – yes, you need – you know, if you're strong, that's good. But you can – can you be too strong? Can you, yes. Can you put too much – Taylor Knox is another classic. Overdoing it, overdoing it, overdoing it. And then when the timing's just right, it's just like, oh, my God, that's the best turn I've ever seen. But, but Taylor needed, Taylor needs that remind, he's such a bull, like he's such a, <laughs> he needs to read, re, good luck coaching him because he won't listen, but he needs that like, hey, finesse, bro, finesse, finesse, finesse. And then when the timing's just right, put that, put that Taylor Knox power into that turn. Like some of the turns he's unleashed are like the best, some of the best that I've ever seen. In that art movie, there's one that is just beyond he, I've studied it a million times. It's just, oh, he's just, his body's so perfectly, it looks so perfect. But repeating it, that's where wave key helps you. We all have that time, those times where I, I did, that was the best turn I've ever done. I want to do that again. And you're like, years go by and you don't even do it again. You're like, how did I do it that one time? How can I not repeat it? That's where wave key helps you. You know, and I'm not saying you, you can, you can do it. You can, you can, um, you have a memory of it, but your body knows what to do to, to put, because so much of excellent surfing isn't necessarily the turn itself. It's what position you're in prior to the turn for leverage. You know, you pick something up and you use a lever, it's easy to pick it up. You know what I mean? So it's leverage. If you can put your body into the position where you can lev you've got leverage, you can you can release the turn with ease. And it it's just like it's like wow, you know? It's just it's 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 like that's what wave key does is help you get into those positions prior to the turn so that you can just let the body unwind in the turn and that's what looked natural pretty cool it's pretty it's cool what I've been able, uh, to teach and be able to to do myself and when i have these light bulb ideas i'm like oh my god that's what i did five years ago when i did that turn in scotland fuck i gotta do that you know absolutely i mean you're opening up a part of your mind that basically it you have this kind of um, account that you've deposited all these, all these kind of techniques into by practicing them. And then 
if you're able to put yourself in that playful, like not thinking too much, like present minded state when you go surf and allow that to come out, that's when it seems like the benefits of this can be realized. How do you do that? How do you go if you're in some crowded beach or you're a 16 year old kid and you're all amped up, you've done your wave key, you've got all that technique stored up. How do you slow down your mind to get to where you can apply that? Yeah, I have a technique in, um, that I learned in Aikido, and it's called, um, the Aikido I studied is called a Ace Aikido, and Ace is, uh, is it an acronym? That's not what it's, I, I'm terrible with that stuff, but um, uh, it's, A stands for Awareness Centeredly Extended. So you bring, your, uh, you bring your awareness down into the center of your body and you almost imagine that there's, you turn on a light bulb or a faucet and you let it, you let it sort of permeate at, throughout your whole entire body. And you, um, it, it doesn't take very long and, that's, and that is getting into your key. And so in Daikido, what they teach you is if, you, you have to connect to your key first before you can connect to the attacker. That's how you can feel the attacker. So it's the same thing in the waves. Like if you connect to yourself, you're going to feel the speed of the wave. You're going to feel, there's a lot of judgment as happens when a wave's moving because they don't just move at you like this. They go like this sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Based on the bottom, deep spot, shallow spot, deep spot, shallow spot, swell direction, outside reef, refraction boom, 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 boom. and so you want to get into a uh, you want to get you want to be moving with it eat mentally you know so that you're like oh i know right where it's going to pick me up boom, and i'm into it you know what i mean i don't have to paddle like this i can and get and let it pick me up you know so to get that can't be you can't be too mental uh and to, to um uh, to do that. So what I find is it's so easy for me to go back into mental, think about something, think about this, that person, this thing, that. As soon as I'm doing that, I'm not in my body anymore. Or, or if I'm judging myself too much, ah, I sucked on that last turn, I, the, the, you know, that means I'm in the past. So I try to recognize that stuff and go back down into the, into, um, into the center of my body using this ace Aikido um, centering uh, exercise, which I'll be going through in uh, the very first uh, live stream, probably, um, you know, and I'll probably be reminding that people a lot about that, but that, if I only knew that when I was younger, that just would have, that helps me stay quiet because it's almost like, a, like your brain is a bit of a, um, a radio that's got, you know, it's got, if you've got two, more than one thought in there, it's like two radio stations. You're trying to tune into the two radio stations and you're not going to hear the music clearly. And so you want to quiet that down. And that's been my simple technique and that can be developed and, and cultivated, you know. Um, but, and also if you're trying too hard, you're, you're trying to do wave key or you're trying to, oh, he, he said do this. And let me tell you, it's not as easy as said and done. You get out there and you want to try it. And I'm kind of, and I'm just like, don't do it. Just let it go. It'll come. It's there. Learn and forget it. Learn and forget it. Uh, you know. So, yeah. Classic. So I had a little note here um, of something that always made me laugh every time I thought about it, and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Man, we had so many good times back in the day filming and, and surfing and traveling the world. Um, in fact, on your runner-up world title finish year, 1988, um, we did a lot of the, of the tour stops together and um, film for your segment in the ozone, which was a lot of fun. And I remember, um, you know, I was really into rap. You know, I, I still am. I've always, you know, been like checking out the new music when it comes out and getting into it. And, and, uh, and I remember you asking me, you're like, you're like, TR, the rap, you know, it's like, I like it. I like it. Like it gets me psyched, but what's the rap, man? I want to hear the rap. Like it's the rap, right? Like the rap as in 
the like rap, I think before rap music meant almost like the concept, you know, like, like rapping down is, is, is throwing some theories around some concepts around. And you were like, you were like, man, you know, this is such a great opportunity for them to like spread some messages and like, where's the rap? T, do you remember that? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when you first hear, I mean, when you first hear rap, you're just thinking, man, all they're talking is they're just talking about themselves. And they're like, I'm a badass. Like, okay, enough about you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> exactly. You're a badass. Of course you are, you know, whatever. But like, what are you actually saying? You know, but when you, but then when you really listen into it, like, like Eight Mile was just like, I loved Eight Mile. I was like, Whoa, that is just, if I would have saw that as a kid, I might have been like decided I want to be a rapper too. Cause I was like, that is the shit. That sure, is well, smart. Rap, that is, uh, rap is evolved that. a lot. I mean, back when you said that, it was pretty shallow across the board. You know, shortly after that, there, it, you know, splintered off into all these different genres, including conscious rap, you know, like Tribe Called Quest and like all these other people that were like, had all these super, interesting concepts and then you had like the other guys with the wordplay and the syllables and and all that stuff so it really of course evolved a lot you know present day i love love some of it so much i I just it's just unbelievable (laughs) so what have you been listening to uh i have been so psyched on this band called fontaine dc you know them no Oh my God. What is it? Like, I think they're Irish. It sounds like Fugazi and like, uh-huh. oh my God. Like, it just sounds, it's, I'm, listen to that, listen to this, go to Fontaine's DC and listen okay. to the song Boys, Boys in the Better Land. It is just like, <laughs> it's got so much attitude and power. And like, I'm just like, oh my God. My wife loves, my wife used to be in a hardcore, thrash sort of thrash band and so she her musical tastes are she likes a lot of shoegazer music like a lot of joy division and a lot all that you know kind of stuff so it's got a little it's got a little bit of that that kind of darkness in it and um you know you know when the guy starts singing you know he's not american you know it kind of has this cool you know not sure where he's from you know like but i think they're irish and then um I love uh, um, I love uh, my morning jacket, uh, the um, the Waterfall One and Waterfall Two albums. It sounds like Pink Floyd, like meets seventies, um, just guitar. Like the guy's voice is insane, and I mean organs and just uh, it just sounds like it's insane. And um, and then I listen. I like. I've been listening to Steve Winwood, um, Low Spark of High Heel Boys. It's that album's so good. And um, and what else? What else? Um, yeah, that's kind of like that's kind of what I've been. And I've been listening to the Nemo soundtrack and uh, and um, uh, Yellow Submarine. My my son just loves the Yellow Submarine, so we just we play. We've been playing the Beatles for like three years straight. Just and it's funny. You listen to it and you don't get sick of it. Can't it's the best kids' it. music. In the town where I was born, lives a man sailed the sea. And my son sings the whole thing. It's so cute. And like, um, yeah. So I listen to the Beatles a lot. Have you been jamming? A little tiny bit, but it's been so like full, um, it's been full blown uh, onto the website. And um, I have a a music room with with drums and bass and all that stuff. And I I get on and play drums like 10 minutes. And then, yeah, like, like, just barely just keep my keep a little bit of this going. And, and then I play a little bit. And, um, and uh, my wife's a good musician, too. So she's playing piano for a while. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to getting back into it. Our, my, uh, older son right now is just at, um, little preschool. So, um, it gives us a little bit of a break and then, uh, then gnarly with the, just launching the site, people are like, Hey, our videos are buffering. I'm like, Oh, and uh, I, 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 I don't want, I, I'm just a teacher. Like I'm, I'm like the, the, the computer part of it is like, 
it's so crazy, you know, with surfing, I could just be like, if I'm just, I'm going to get myself to the beach. Like I, I, I'm going to get there. I, you know, I don't have a car, but I'm going to get there, you know, with this, with this, this thing, which has been the biggest undertaking ever, ever, ever. I have to depend on computer people and editors. And I'm like, you know, Hey, uh, how long will that take? You know? And it's like, fucking takes forever. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, am I ever going to get this thing done? And uh, yeah, it's been the biggest, craziest thing. And also too, it's me. So I'm just like, no, no don't put that on there. That looks pleasant. You know, like I, it, <laughs> the whole process has been so crazy, but. Um, well, I'm sure you've got some quality music and surfing time coming up once everything's running, running smoothly. And this will be a good investment of time for you to, to get it rocking. That's you got to buckle down. That's the goal is now I've got, um, I actually got a job now. <laughs> no, I've been, I haven't really, I've been just coaching like Taro and Parker and, and um, Max and, and I got a couple other private students. I coach them with Zoom, uh, look at footage and then go through their, um, what they need to do next and all that stuff. But that's, you know, that sort of just helps me pay the rent a little bit. And, you know, and, and I help my wife with her business, but now I will have actually full, you know, like job, which is what, which I created. Um, um, well, I don't, I think my, my, I shouldn't say I create, well, I guess I created, but my wife really, my wife's really helped me so much without her. I, I don't think I could have done it. And, um, and I'm looking forward to like traveling a bit and meeting up with, you know, like-minded people that are, you know, want to get better and, and, um, and collaborate with, and, uh, you know, I'd like to have my kids in the jungle down there in, in uh, Central America for a bit, you know, and, uh, I want my kids to like meet different people and do different things. And, you know, so we have a, a lot of, I, I spend a lot of time with them, which is good. You know, I feel really close to my kids. I don't feel like I'm, I've, uh, been, um, I don't feel like, uh, like, I've put them off to the side in order to get this done. I've just done it at the same, I, you know, that's the main focus is the kids and then this way of key. And then if, in between, if I can surf a little bit here and surf a little bit there, then I'll do it. You know, I sort of just let surfing, but I know more surfing is coming. So. Well, I think that's keeping your, your wave key so sharp because you're applying it every day of the week. I mean, so it's, it's really. Well, it's going to get better because I'm going to be teaching I'm not going to be working on the website. I'm going to be just teaching. Which exactly. Is but and it, then the amount of, with, the, with having a, but, uh, you know, a more, rather than an, everything's been an investment. So now we make, uh, you know, some money and I'll be able to hire somebody to be able to, you know, consistently do it. And then it's like, okay, cool. From 2 to 4 p.m., we're just going to do this. Okay, great. Because I, with my ADD and, and my creativity and everything, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, so I'm like, I want to do that over there already. I already, I want, I want to go over there already. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to just sit still. You know, I'm, 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 you know me. I'm like you. You know, we're we're both pretty hyper and like fired up and you know, always excited. producing. You know, so always producing something. <laughs> Every day, all day. You gotta so, give gonna... my friend a call. You gotta give my friend a call. He's in D Dominican Republic. The guy did all the music for the site. He's there. Got, got to link up for sure. So I got a classic memory that I want to uh, share with our viewers. Um, it was actually not that long ago, a couple of years ago in Costa Rica. Um, shout out to Ian Bean who put together this killer trip where Brad was coaching a very well-known author named Timothy Ferris, who many of you might know as the author of the 30-day work week, I believe it's called. No, no. no it's uh, the four hours. Four, four hour, hour work week. Yeah, excuse me. And then the, there's the four hour this, the four hour that. The guy's a specialist in learning. So yeah. he's this amazingly talented, um, super intelligent, physically uh, specimen who like goes around, finds the best teachers and learns things at this incredible pace, combining his mega talents with the best teachers in the world. And so, for example, um, I think he went to Argentina and took tango classes and within like a couple of years won the world championship or like he's got these just amazing feats that he's done with learning. So he decides he's going to learn to surf. And of course, he calls Gurr. 
uh, you know, best. If, you, if you're someone like that and you do your homework and you're going to find the best of the best, you're going to find Gur eventually. So he came down with this other good friend of ours, John, and uh, we had this incredible week together. And I got to watch Gur teach like one of the most talented learners, you know, because he's, he's figured out how to learn things because, lear like, for example, learning a language once you've learned one or two, you can learn 30 easily because that part of your brain gets strong. It's learning that first one that's tough. So he learned how to learn, learned how to get into his brain. I remember he was teaching that Chinese. Yeah. So, so this guy decides to learn probably the most difficult thing in the world, surfing. And I want you to tell us about how it was working with somebody that was such an incredibly fast learner, but you could see his frustration and, yeah. and, and how were you able to, to bring him back to center to just teach the most basic, I mean, he was learning to pop up. I mean, like first, first, yeah, first timer. The, the, thing is, the thing is, is he needed to, pardon me? I'm listening. What'd you say at the end? Uh, the last thing I said was, how are you able to kind of bring him back to center to, to concentrate on these basic things? Because he was about three steps ahead of himself, the way I was seeing things. Because he's learned to learn yeah, yeah. these other things so, so fast. Yeah. So re realistically, um, you're not going to come down for a weekend and, 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 and really, you, you're going to learn a couple of things and some stuff but you're going to need to take that away and so ideally you you know he, he would have done himself a favor had he called me a month before we even went on this trip and i'd given him a program to work on to work on and practice with so that when we did get water time which is different you know water time is is you know surfing is like two sports you know it's, it's one is riding the waves but the other one is catching them and catching them is just a whole like it's a you know i don't i don't teach people how to catch waves with wave key like it's that's what that's what you do in the water and you need a water coach or a water guide and i recommend that you know what i mean and i'm i'm a good one but um but there's lots of good ones out there that know and even better than me when, when in a local spot they'll know where the waves are best and which ones to go on and all that stuff and and so that's a whole that's a, that's why the sport is so difficult but i think one of one of tim's things that hopefully he took away from is that your will isn't isn't an asset in this situation and if you know my one of my mentors of my life that taught me so much she used to say, you know, where there's will, there's no skill. So you got to get your will out of the way. You know, you, your will has brought you to, to this place. Now it's like, a, it's like a tool. Just You don't need any more. You don't need this hammer right now because you need a saw. So just don't hold the hammer and the saw at the same time. Just put the hammer down and then use the saw. And so in this sense, it's, it, he was just trying too hard. And I kept trying to say to him, hey, it's, this isn't about trying too hard. This is, about, this is about learning every moment. Just learn. Just learn. Just be open to learn. Be open to make mistakes. Be open to it. That's how you can learn. And he was, <laughs> I remember, I have a vision of him from when the sun is going down and he was still in the water going, fuck! You know, and I know that feeling and you know that feeling and probably every other surfer in the world knows that feeling, you know, that, <laughs> you know but, but that's not going to get you there. You know what I mean? And he was pissed. And, um, and he was doing great. Know, uh, yeah, but I think that that in itself, you know, the drive is good. But then at what point is that drive, you really need to, to really need to like go, hey, this, this is actually hurting me for my progression. So in a way, it's a bit, of, it's a bit more spiritual in that, in that realm. So that's where we left it. And, you know, he said to me, hey, uh, you know, I can put this on my blog and all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not ready yet. You know, like, I don't want 6 million people, you know, or whatever you got, you know, following you. Like, I'm not ready. I need to finish off WaveKey, which is what I, you know, I have now. So I would recommend now, 
that he buy wave key he's always trying to get something free which maybe i will give him something free because he's got so many people you know but it's to practice that and then come and do like a private with me or come along and, and then we can do some water time and then i can show you things on you know while you're going through the water or, or afterwards or whatever it is you got all this this is what's going to help me with my private students and with anybody i i do privately is i'll be like look you, you got to do the fundamentals one and two and then once you've done that uh, or at least you've done some of it you know what i mean you know what you know the the what we're the platform that we're working on working from now you know and i think when i get a new student it's always it's been like here's what wavekey is here's what it does da, 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 da. now I've got, now you can go to wavekey.com and you can just you can sign up and you can start uh practicing and i have the things we talked about in this podcast i talk about them in in there too you can download a like a 30 page playbook that i called it that helped remind you not to try too hard and you know and and and, and to accept going surfing as your play time it's reward it's it's reward for all that you do on the land and uh, by the way i talked to on facetime uh, i talked to stretch uh, um, Three three days ago, three four days ago, he's working on a board for me. Awesome. I've never had one, and I've been I've always thought okay, at one point I got to get a board off him. He's like, I just have to ride one. I have to try one of those things. I never, I just hadn't. Just, and then this situation turned out over here that the guy over here connected me with them, and and then I, they're like, hey, what do you want? I'm like, why don't I just call Stretch himself and and let's do it that way, you know? And then he and I had this great conversation and he's he's making a board a, a board off of um uh john one of john glom's boards um that that um he had in the 83 when i was yeah that he rode a double wing round pin he's gonna make twin he's gonna make it for me and i'm it's so cool how it's full circle like i was out the same day at swami's like it's so interesting i was like oh i didn't even know wow so cool man a surf world surf thing like i i totally totally believe nice guys finish first in surfing this whole this whole not so nice you know nice guys don't finish first that's no that's not right nice guys definitely finish first in this in the surf world because they connect the dots uh globally and then you have friends all over the world and you share information you learn things and you give things and it's just like it's it just keeps coming you know and um it's it's wonderful and i, I feel so uh i feel so good uh I, I feel, uh, that i have such such loving relationships with so many people around the world and feel super sad when one when we lose one like sonny miller or you know or, or even Derek Ho. like I, so i got like full stories of funny stories of, of hanging with Derek and stuff and, and like funny stuff man and it's sad you know we, we, we you know we really you really uh you really you feel it you really feel it you know when that happens man we want to thank you so much for a lot of knowledge some classic laughs and a, a wonderful trip down memory lane um thanks buddy i look forward to to, to possibly coming to uh to back to Central America or, or Dominican Republic and doing um, some workshops and some teaching and stuff. And also teaching some good servers out there how to teach this stuff. Because if you're a real good server, you're gonna, uh, these, it's all gonna make sense to you and you're gonna be able to pull from your experience, you know? Um, just as similar as like, if you're a martial arts guy and you've been doing martial arts a long time and then you take on a new, a di a new discipline, it's a lot faster for you to pick it up. You know, you, good servers will pick it up pretty quickly. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. Great. I'm, I'm psyched to, to get into it and uh, look forward to hanging with you soon, brother. Thanks, buddy. Me too, man. Okay. Well, take care and much love to the familia. All right. Thanks, GR. I was stoked to talk with you, buddy. You too. More soon. Yeah, for sure. See you, bro. See ya. Is this Visualizing, paddling out and making it real Dedication, on a level only you can feel Motivation, it gets stronger every year Realization, 
Action cures fear. The Surfcast, yeah. Team Anti Over It. Zero Yell. Yeah. 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 Major Inspiration. Is this enough? Is this enough? Is this enough?